All right. Here's here's the weird thing about what's happening right now. As he keeps cutting out, but we can still have everyone clearly. Is it because no. you're a vamp? Welcome to Wizard Tank Games, everybody. My name is Adam. I am your host and DM. Thanks. <laughs> it's working perfectly. You. Listen, you would not believe the problems we've had tonight. Uh, I think we've got them resolved at this point. And we're just going to roll. Forward. We're not throwing anybody under the bus. We're not throwing anybody under the bus. All right. There are multiple problems. <laughs> Mostly because Evan was playing Minecraft. That is what the big problem was, you dummy. <laughs> but thanks for tuning in to our Halloween special. Some of us have dressed up. I, I, uh, bribed everybody with uh, in-game inspiration. So officially I award inspiration to Evan, Josh, Lance, and myself. Yo, I'll give my inspiration to Mike because I don't know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess I was gonna say Justin just put on his costume. <laughs> oh, Mike, Mike, you got my inspiration back I've, I've got a costume on. My last one so. it uh, counts. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, like I've got full eye contact. So I got eye like, con. Something's making contact with my eyes. Uh, we'll refer to the chat. Somebody types in chat right now that uh, you know that you should have inspiration. We'll go with that. Orion ninety two said, "Yeah, <laughs> we're not streaming right now, Danny." You oh dang! <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, we've had a million issues, but we are ready to roll now. I'm gonna push my camera back a little bit. Here. We are ready to jump in. Tonight is, <laughs> I still think it'll be a pretty good night. No, we'll have to see, we'll have to see. I, I, think, I think we still have plenty of time to play. We have literally two hours less than what we anticipated, but you know, yeah. that's what? life. <laughs> that's life. Yeah. <laughs> so let's jump straight into the game. Also, I'm gonna have to take a break. Like uh, I've gone two hours in these contacts in, but like I don't know, maybe they're stuck in my eye now. We'll, we'll roll with it. Okay, so a recap is in order, given the circumstances <laughs> of what has happened so far. Uh, yeah, I started a few times. I'm gonna try to be enthused about it, but like I think I might have PTSD from this first paragraph. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Oh, also, I'm going to turn the music back on since it, it wasn't me or my music. Did I get inspiration or not? Streams of Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you guys get bored watching D&D, &D, come watch me stream Minecraft. <laughs> oh, Over in the dirt room. Mm -hmm. All right. Long ago, several strangers met on the road outside a town called Bros. The war hero, the vigilante, the wandering cult member, the runaway, the chosen one, and the burden bearer, all came together and made their home in this small city. Brost is located in the northernmost reaches of the kingdom of Tethir, which has only known peace for a few short years since the end of a decades-long civil war, a war that raged between corrupt and sometimes outright evil barons, and who were opposed by the now queen Zoranda Starr and her revolutionaries. Finding a new home and a new purpose, protecting the people of Frost, the skeleton crew, as they were now known, undertook many tasks, including investigating a sinister cult. This culminated in an intense battle with the cultists and a summoned Merowood, a demon with six arms and the body of a snake, which nearly destroyed our party of heroes. And when at last they triumphed, they realized it may have been a diversion as a greater Baylor stepped out of a portal. With nearly all hope lost, the party frantically tried to decide, should they stay, should they fight, should they run or, but they need not have worried. For as soon as the demon stepped out of the portal, it was drawn into a large crystal and vanished to who knows where. Another time they encountered a legendary figure known only as the Lady of the Tree, 
a witch or a hag to some, a demigoddess to others. She made it known that she had great power at her disposal and drew strength from the potentials created and lost through her deals. And so she began to make offers to the members of the skeleton crew. Some accepted, some declined. But for Absalom, the choice was clear. He would sacrifice ever having the chance to be reunited with his fallen sister in the next life. He would sacrifice and give up the chance of happiness and of knowing love in this life. And in truth, he would give anything to exact revenge on the man who destroyed his life, Dr. Vincent Colder. And soon, he'll have his chance. So, Absalom, as you kind of come to grips with this occurrence, as you'd fallen asleep in your office, you wake up to the sound of a door knocking, and you're greeted by Lazuli, captain of the Libertas, the flying pirate ship, who you had tasked with finding the doctor. And he says to you, I have done so. What do you do? I slap him. No, I just can't. Um, all right. Uh, where is he? Or where is it? Do you mind if I come in and get a drink? We just landed. Sure. Um, I may have something to drink around here. Probably not heavy enough for you. No, it's okay. I've got, right. I've got something of my own. So he comes in and he pulls out a bottle and starts to pour a glass, pulls out, and he like has all this kind of in a kit in his pockets, pulls out another glass and gestures towards you. What was that? He gestures towards you like, do you want to drink as well? No, I'm all right. All right, more for me. Pours the, takes the shot and starts drinking out of the bottle. All right, so we searched around, we asked some places, and uh, I'd seen this before in my dreams, you know, that uh, the woman at the well, she'd send it to me. So I, I knew basically what we were looking for. I don't know if you've encountered this or not, but I remember the screams. So it didn't take long. We found a, uh, a uh, group of uh, Arakokra lived in the mountains to the northeast of here. And uh, they described the place. They call it Castle Dark Cloud. They say the storms seem to follow it and screams can be heard for miles. So we tracked it down. It doesn't move very far. This is, this is sort of rare. They, uh, the sky cloud, uh, sky cloud giants, they, uh, they like to drift and wonder, but this cloud, this castle in the clouds stays just to the northeast of uh, Amon, actually, not uh, two, maybe three days from here in that general area. So we get close, and just like they said, storms seem to follow this place, man. The lightning, the rains, but if you push through, you begin to hear the screams. It's unnerving, I can tell you this. We, uh, we didn't stick around for long, but we knew we'd find a place. So, are you ready? I would like to wash my hands of this whole thing if it's all the same to you. Yeah, I'd like to get this over with. All right, the sheep's up top. All right, let me uh, let me get my my group. Uh, All right. Whoever's gonna help me, I'll I'll meet you there. All right, this place has a a sky dock uh, towards the top of the mountain, so does pretty it. convenient actually. But, but uh, surprising. Either. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna go and uh, meet with Eric, I guess first. Yeah, that's important to me. So, so yeah, I go meet Eric in the throne room. I'm assuming that's where he's still at. What was that? There's a bunch of people around me. I, I start pushing my way through. <laughs> Eric, Eric. Yes. I've found 
I found my next clue to find the doctor. I could use your help. What did you find? The sky pirates I that I told you about before. They uh Lazula. Yeah. They found uh they found the storm giant castle that has the crystals I need to find the doctor. And uh where are you like, going? It's northeast next to I believe is Heyman. Yeah, where at? I know it pretty well. Yeah. I could use your help. There's no one I know that could probably take down a giant like you. Have you told the others? No, I'd come to you first. Do you know what's there? Do you know what we'll be fighting? What we'll be facing? Storm giants, maybe? I don't know much about them. Maybe we can be diplomatic. I don't know. But they have the crystal you need. Yeah. It's either I go with you guys or I try to do this alone. I don't think alone is going to work quite the same as you think it's going All right. <clears throat> um, well, if it's all the same to you, I'd like to see if the other one's uh, interested. Yeah. I don't know where anybody's at. Except for Vrogs. Okay. So you are all called for. You gather. War Council room. It seems um, Absalom's found uh, another clue. His ongoing search for the doctor. This next stop will be a storm giant. Storm giant uh, castle. Castle. We'll be taking a skyship. A skyship? Yeah. Oh. Hmm. That's interesting. It's docked. You have a skyship dock. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> it's I did know that. I didn't, actually. But I say that I did. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Yes, obviously. Um, <laughs> When will you want to leave? As soon as possible. Lazuli's ready to leave. Are the rest of you interested? Before we leave, I would uh, go to get my boat recharged. How long, how long is the travel from here? He said about two days. Two days? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I mean, do we, at some point. Do we know what we're walking into? Are there any supplies that we need? I don't know. I don't know anything about Storm Giants. I was hoping maybe you guys did. I mean... History check? Or nature check? Yeah, history check. Can I also make a history check since I'm... Uh, history. Can I aid? Sure. Can I make one as well, just because that's I'm proficient in history? Natural 20. And um, cloud giants are an interesting uh, breed of giant. They're not like the others. They're very arcane in nature. They, uh, although they're somewhat fickle, and there are a large portion of these castles that have been abandoned as the cloud giant numbers have kind of dwindled over time. So... There are a lot of abandoned ones. Um, they operate via some sort of magic, um, especially speaking of the, they're known to contain these large crystals of some kind that power the, uh, some of the magics that keep the castles aloft. I just relay that to the group. I got a 25. I don't know if I'm going to learn anything different from that. Um, with between the natural 20 and the 25, you, you do find it odd that there would be screaming, um, that's unsettling. And based on what you know of the cloud giants, they're not 
that, that's abnormal. You would think that they would be more welcoming than terrifying. They have some structured intelligence. Yeah, a great deal of intelligence. Oh, I was saying storm giants this entire time. Whoops. What did you think, Cloud? Cloud. Is there a difference? Danny wants to know. Yeah, okay. Yeah, one's fluffy, one's stormy. Well, I'll say this. I will help you, I will help you out soon. Too. All right. Um, all, the, all the rest of you want to come? Yeah. I okay. think I'm going to sit this one out. Fair enough. I didn't like it anyways. I'm so I, if we get a chance to fly <laughs> on this shit, I'm going to be on that. I was going to say, I've never, I've never I seen Cloud that. Giants before. Sounds like fun. Yeah. I would like to take the day and maybe leave in the morning if that's all right. Yeah, I'll ask. I'll ask Lazuli, See what the plan is. But Lazuli, yeah. a moment too. Uh, can I ask a question real quick? Because I wasn't here last week. What happened to the chick that you were supposed to be protecting? She, she's sitting in like a. Uh, she's just like she knows that she's not supposed to endanger herself, so she's staying behind. That's what she's doing. Uh, Taryn's kind of vibing with her. Oh. No. Make make a, a general charisma check here. <laughs> I hope you get natural twenty, man. No, but I, can I use my my luck on that? You can use the inspiration I got tonight. No, 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 no. I've got I didn't, plenty. Of, I didn't. I didn't plenty of luck to burn. Ooh, lots of luck. Okay, charisma. Uh. 18. I burned all of my luck. She's cordial with you. Looks like you're right, not I'll take it. I'll getting take it. lucky. <laughs> yeah. Although for Karen, I mean, she's an older woman at the age of, I think, was she 19? So well, it's the same age as me. And that's how old I am. But uh, yeah. yeah, she's got a lot on her mind. But she's cordial. I'm not like putting the moves on her. I'm just trying to spend time with her. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm playing it sure. low key. Well, she's a druid of Circle of the Dreams, so she has some interesting input in that realm that maybe you're less familiar with. I was definitely gonna go show her the Tree of Life thing. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to plant my seed. Anybody else? Yeah. Anybody else want to do anything else? Um, how much do I trust Roja? <laughs> it's totally up to you. Um, can I insight check her? Sure. Because I know we we butted heads on stuff before, and she thinks I'm like a dirty kid from what I've picked up, even though I'm her boss. <laughs> hey. Uh, I mean, eight on the inside. <laughs> then it makes sense from your perspective that you would think that. Meta, that's not how she perceives you at all. She is, although, like, the equivalent, she's not much older than, like, your equivalent age. She's early, early to mid-20s, essentially. Okay. She's actually, like, 50-ish, but... Okay. You know, she's about quarter life. She thinks of you more as like a rascal. Like you're, you're a lot of potential. Okay. But she, in a lot of ways, tries to mother you because she feels like you need it. Okay. But she's um, a dwarf, so that comes across as like a little harsh and a little so i want to seek her out specifically not using my headset no i want to go actually find her in person um is that hard no okay no uh, yeah she's she's at the bar at this time of the evening rosha uh can i hey? talk to you for a bit in private sure 
Oh, uh, I am going to take a What can I do for you? Listen, um, the boys and I were going on a trip. And, uh, All right. I want to tell you something. I know that I'm a bit of a cut up, um, but I want to be real with you for a minute, okay? Okay. There's a, uh, a danger that I have, well, somebody's come looking for me. Um, I get the sense that uh, nobody who's in my vicinity is going to be safe for me. I had a conversation with a woman. She wears a porcelain mask. Her name is, uh, let me check my notes, Camriel. Um, I told her I'd like to speak with her, but she disappeared. If she comes back while I'm gone, I'll be honest, I don't know what to do. If she comes back... Do you want me to kill her? I could kill her no, for no, you. No, 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 no. Oh, no oh. offense, but you couldn't kill her. Right. I don't know if anybody can kill her. Here's the thing. I'm afraid if she comes back to me and I'm not here, she's going to think that uh, I'm dead, that she can't trust me. So I guess if she comes back, tell her, I had to go, I had to do something. Tell you what, give it this. And I'm, I'm gonna pull out a note that I've written. Okay. To hand it to her. Basically mm -hmm. the note says, uh, I have a way that I can kill the Lord if she trusts me. Um, but I, I wanna speak with her before I do it. Okay. And then I'll be back shortly. So okay. if she comes back, give it this. All right. Just, uh, I, mean, I suppose there are probably not too many women with porcelain faces. You'll know what we see here. Do us a favor, don't read it. I don't, I don't know what he's capable of. I don't know what she's capable of, to be completely honest. I'd right. rather you not know what's in this note, just to be safe. All right. Right, you can count on me. Okay. Well, uh, are you all right? I don't know. No. I don't know. I got a bell. Uh, keep a lock on things. Keep a close eye on them. I don't sure. trust them. That wee boy. Yeah, that the wee boy. Your... All right. Yeah, uh, keep an eye on him. Yeah. Uh, that's all. Nice. I'll be back when I can. All right, we'll be careful. I'll try. She goes back to wiping down the bar. <laughs> yeah, Justin, you got pizza, dude. I feel like you straight up reached through the screen and took a pizza bar pizza. Grabbed a bite. <clears throat> All right, so oh. everybody got what they need? I uh, sent you a text. You sent me a text, sorry. I think I'd like to do real quick. Can I take a long rest? Yes. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Can I roll? I'm gonna roll. Although, didn't you? Didn't you already roll? I oh, failed yeah. once. Yeah. Yeah. But if, get, but if I get another one, you know. Or you guys are gonna wait a full another day, right? Yeah. So I need to make another roll. I rolled an eleven. I'm good. What's Unless you count two ones. No, I'm just kidding. Um. Was it fifty gold per potion for a lesson? Ten What bigger ones? Adam, I have a question because I honestly don't know how the madness works super well. So I'm just going to leave this to your discussion. If, do I know something's wrong enough to with me to, for me to like seek out oh. someone to help me fix it? Yes. Can you, I, especially because you are... The nature of it. Yeah, because you, you are so... Um, in tune with my mind. Driven, mind yeah. Can, that you notice the blank spot. Absalom, can is I do there, an insight check like with a, Absalom on that? Like just to, someone I can go. find. What? Did you ask me to do an insight check on Absalom? No, no. Uh, I wanted to do an insight check on Taryn to know if he also like something happened in that same process. I always wanted to do that, but when we did it, it got oh. kind of rushed by, and I didn't never get a chance. Yeah, we can say it's kind of cumulative at this point. You can, you can. Okay. No. 
24. 24. Yeah. What is, um, yeah. So with 24, you, you can tell that there's an occasional moment where as Taryn is usually so collected, he's a goofball. He does his own thing or whatever, but he, he rarely is like missteps and you catch yeah. him a few times where he kind of almost stutters. Like you could tell that he's kind of like Eric with the whole one thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. He, he, he can tell that something's not quite right. Okay. I Eric, is there, a, is there a cleric on, on the council or anything? There is. Mike, do you have that name? Yep, stand by one. Hey, Adam, is there any place in here I can get like a leather armor, like plus one or plus two? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. How much is a plus two? Let's check. A leather armor plus two? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'd be interested in that too. If you find one, I'll give you some money to do it, buy me something. Well, I have to get my money from Mike, but how much did we get from the one thing? It was 6,000, right? Yeah. What one thing? Our earnings in general from the getting the keep. I haven't spent any money since then. Oh, I so. thought it was only 3,000. Was it six? I thought it was. I have 6,000 stored written on my thing, so I don't know where, why else it would be stored. I just figured it'd be ridiculous for a person to carry 6,000 gold on them at one time. I don't know. It's not pulling this up for me. Status of your back. Hmm. I've got a PDF here too. I'll check. Let me check that. I want three. I want three greater healing potions. Okay. How much are those? Greater healing. Well, my PDF is pulling up. We'll price check that. Greater. Mm. So, D and D Beyond forums are suggesting two hundred to two fifty. Uh, for a potion of greater healing, yeah, it's your lucky day. Uh, actually, you're buying from someone in the city. Yeah. Okay. 150. Oh, for greater do. healing. Other armor plus two is only 150. Awesome. Oh. Cool. Right. I'm between now and when I go to bed. Yes. Um, I'm just gonna work with Andrat, trying to befriend him, and that's how I'll learn how to cast fourth level spells for my level. Did you say how much the leather armor was, Adam? Um, so do you have the cost of normal leather armor pulled up? You have uh, Yeah, well, I have my um D and D beyond, yeah. Um so add two thousand. No, I'm sorry, add six thousand. Oh. Not two. For plus two armor, it's an additional six thousand. What about for studded leather? Same process. Uh, yeah, so the 6,000 gives you the, the plus one. Then I have that technically. So you I want think... it enchanted? I, well, like no, no. Enchanted. No, I was going to buy solid leather armor enchanted. If we, if the 6,000 was what we got, I'm Is pretty it sure it was. Plus one or plus two? Plus two, right? That's a plus two. Yeah, 6,000 plus the cost of normal leather. Yeah, I'm totally going to do that. Okay. Yeah, I'll do it too. Which is what, like an additional <laughs> maybe or something? Will they give us a discount if we buy two? That is at a pretty steep discount. Oh, okay. Oh. I'll take cool. it. I so, will take that too. Is it possible for me to get my shield? I just became a tank, guys. It's awesome. Yes. What would the price be? 
Um, it depends on what kind of enchantment you want. And yeah, plus way, one shield or armor. What happens? Uh, either. Okay. Actually, for both of them, it's a thousand gold. Okay. Really, the issue that you're looking at is that it takes a while because the enchantment has to be worked over time. Okay. Um, in order for it to stick. Okay. Is there a chance I can purchase a plus one shield? Plus one shield is fifteen hundred. Yeah. Plus one armor is also 15. Okay. Let's see the armor then. Okay. Makes sense. On top of whatever your yeah, normal yeah, cost yeah. would be. Does that affect any of your. As a barbarian, your. Because I'm allowed. Unarmored defense? I Let me double check. I already, I already have armor. Okay. I have two gold now. You just, you just have to weigh it. Um, I have zero. You do you, but yeah, you can absolutely purchase that. All right, anything else? Anybody else? Yeah, I just put, I mean, I just want to see the cleric to see if she can help me. That's it. Okay. Um, so roll it, just roll a d20 for me. Okay. Good thing I burned all my luck. Oh, oh that's not bad. 15. I just want to just uh, see how well it goes. What did you get? 15. 15. Okay. With the 15, she is able to, given the nature of your um, your state of madness here, the consequence of your madness, she is able to restore oh, that. that. Oh, yeah. perfect. Uh, Fardrin Iron Grip. Yeah. Clark Fardrin. Mortar. Yeah, so she's able to um, remove that madness from him. But uh, yeah, so you are restored. Type, type. Anybody else? Anything else? Uh, Can I get both? Yeah. Plus one shield and plus one armor? 100%. Sweet. I want to uh, send a letter. Okay. My lady. All right. Uh, where I to personally deliver also, not by me. Hand deliver, not personally. Hand deliver by some. Okay. I trust. Who? Cool. All right. By the way, he, uh, I, he can accommodate your request. Yeah. Um. I might have a uh, barge. Okay. Up. All right. Which is like the captain of your guard, right? Oh, uh, no, that's the other mage. The other, okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Female mage. Gotcha. Yeah, I think she's probably the Understood. Understood. My guess is she's really important. She claims she didn't get my letters. She's probably right. She's been my letters for like five years. So, yeah. Did you take those out? Uh, they're just a little dry. Not quite that, because they're not the full Solera thing. The really Solera, you know how yeah. you say that word? Gosh, hurts my eyes looking at them, freaking me out. They pop out yeah. super easy. It's not those. It's not the coloring. It's just like I know what it feels the like. The size, yeah, they're like twice the size of normal contact. I Although the like, full ones, like, dude, I watched the video where, like, you have to, like, feed it up. Uh, and, yeah, you uh, kind of have to do that a little bit with these, but not nearly as bad yeah. as the full ones. Anyway. Hey, no, Adam. Yes, what's up? Sorry, I don't want to get bogged down in this. Is uh, is a plus two half plate going to be significantly more expensive or just the cost difference? Plus two half plate? Yeah. Are you able to? Uh, real quick, Justin. You can wear full plate now. Yeah, sorry, I uh, multi-class this level. Which one did you go with? I went with life. Okay, then you definitely. Cleric, a life cleric. Yeah, then you definitely. You can do, you can do. Yeah. Um, how much, do. okay, so all, all you, you said plus one? Plus two. Plus two, again, tack, tack on 6,000 on top of the cost of whatever it is that you're looking for. Okay. So you said half plate. Okay. 
What's the flame turner? It's a pretty big boost. Does somebody want to? Did we get any money from the last battle? For trade? Uh, no, we didn't. Because the, are you talking about the one where we went underground? The one I, the one I missed. About? Yeah. No, because it was for the kingdom. So we didn't make anything. Uh, yeah, so 6750. Uh, you know that gives you disadvantage health checks, right? Huh? That gives you disadvantage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so 6750 yeah. for half plate plus two. Yeah. I'm I'm seven fifty short, but hold on, I might sell something to get it. I'll give it. I'll give it. The rocks Ooh. chips in. Ooh. Oh my boy, my boy. Yeah. How much was it that you're missing? Seven hundred pages. <laughs> <years. laughs> Is the flame friend plus two? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Danny, is the flame friend plus two? What is it? Is the flame tongue plus two? Flame, flame tongue plus two? Um, let me check. Yeah, I, have it, I have it here on my phone. Out of my wilderness trap. I think it is. I, I, yeah, Mike, I'm, I'm like 90% sure, but let me oh. double check. Flame tongue. And I think all my abilities that benefit from no armor is just no head. Okay. So it doesn't have a bonus to attack. I'm balling on the AC uh, boys. It doesn't have a bonus to attack. It doesn't make any sense. It has a bonus to your damage, like nuts, but yeah, I mean, I get the uh, bonus. Got them bonus nuts. Bonus well, nuts. Okay. I should have washed my mouth. I was just got them bonus nuts. I, think we're, I was gonna edit this anyway. So it's fine. I'm not going through and pulling out this. You say something stupid, it's on the internet. Like I'm not. I'm not editing that much. Oh, just that first one that Mike told. Just these nuts. <laughs> You're gonna love my nuts. <laughs> well, what, speaking of which, what kind of uh, weapon? Mike, you want? Mike, I think it does get a plus two Great because shit. I'm looking at it right now. I put it on Absalom, and on the thing, it, it gives plus two at its own dice, <laughs> which makes no okay. sense for well, Absalom I mean, to have. As you say, there are many other things like that good of a weapon. Do you mind? Um, yeah, D and D Beyond doesn't say anything about it. Oh wait, I'm proficient. I'm proficient because I'm a paladin. Never mind. No, never mind. Oh. It, yeah, never mind. So yeah, it doesn't give a plus two. That sucks. Yeah, kind of weird. Um, I'll tell you what though. If you trade your defender, we'll say that uh, one of the Dwarven Smiths has made a plus two flame tongue greatsword in exchange for the defender. Yeah. Yeah, I do it. It doesn't even exist. That's amazing. Yeah. I'll do it. Right. That's awesome. That's like that's totally worth it. For you specifically, because you're not using the defender for defense, you're using it for <laughs> the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I needed something that was I didn't want to Yeah. Oh yeah, right. Awesome. Yeah. That's that's awesome. <laughs> I had to look at it. Where I'm just okay, so you guys are you you get a good night's sleep, possibly. Absalom, go ahead and roll. Find I, out. I rolled an eleven. Yeah, you just had to knock it over. Yeah, then not knock it a one. one. No one, just one. Yeah. All right. So you're able to get a restful sleep, uh, and part of that is due to the fact that like your subconscious knows that the task is what you do. And so you're you're already kind of finding solace in that regards. Then you too. get up in the morning, get your things together, and you head up to the top deck, uh, which you had previously left kind of unexplored. It's a one of the upper portions of the mountain has a essentially like a drawbridge that drops down and forms a like a flight deck, and so that's where the lazuli. Uh, Where's my bag? I have one if you need. Oh, it's searching. Yeah. Remember when I moved to the thing? Yeah. Books. Books. Oh. All right. Yeah. Roll D12. But anyway. You notice that the um, the vessel's been restocked and everything. And they're they're awaiting your eleven. Eleven. 
All right. Add 11,000 gold to the treasury. Yo, we out of here, boys. Nice. Good money. That was us saving the uh, mines. Mm -hmm. What did it? 100%. That's my boys are um, so you guys, you guys board the ship, and it, uh, after everybody's ready, they, they pull in all the planking and everything like that. Um, he does give you a brief warning that the, uh, the, uh, the initial takeoff is uh, a little jarring for people that aren't used to it, so hold down. Also, um, if you fall overboard, there's a five-foot wake. We may be able to catch you. After that, you're dead, man. Question. No, not a question. Bro. Statement. I always have an idea. Bronze uh, immediately ties himself to like the main. Yeah, the main mass. Yeah. He's just like, yo, I'm strapped in. <laughs> Although you do, uh, you do notice that the uh, the female paladin, Aarakocra, she is like incredibly vigilant. She's standing next to the captain who is at the uh, the helm, and she's just like constantly watching out specifically for you guys. They call her Paca. Uh, they don't. They call her um, Valley. Uh, Valley of the Paca. N no, not that. <laughs> not That's that not what it V a l l i Valley. Uh, in fact, he does go ahead and introduce you guys shortly after takeoff. But initially, you feel this lurch, and you guys like almost drop to a knee. The way that the, the vessel drops before it reengages, you can feel this humming, this like vibration in the decking of the ship as the wings unfurl and it slowly begins to lift before it kind of dramatically takes off. So it's a subtle. And then picks up, and you guys feel that lurching. You know, it's almost like a seasickness. Like if you can imagine, all of a sudden having a speedboat just <laughs> take off on you. Kind of feel your stomach rise up a little bit before you kind of settle into it as the vessel itself continues to climb and climb and climb. Eric loves it. Frogs turns into green and beautiful. Right. All right. So introductions. I am Lazuli, uh, captain of this vessel. This is my first mate, Valley Jordan. She doesn't talk, but uh, you can tell when she means business, and you do that, or she'll, well, she'll handle business. Um, Utak, he's uh, he's still below deck. Uh, don't freak out. He's a no, but he's a good people. All right. Um, but Petra and I, and you can see this half elf, female half elf sorceress. Um, she's walking about. Uh, we call her Fate. Uh, again, just kind of give her some space. She does her own thing. She's here for you if you need something. Don't mess with her. She has to kind of stick to herself. Uh, Vega is, and you can see like this, uh, this Goliath that is just like has these two barrels like tucked up under his his arms. He switches one over and kind of stacks it, and he kind of like you know just does this little gesture. <laughs> Pulls it back under and continues to move it. Um, Vega is something, I don't know. He's got a long, he's one of the Goliath names, you know. But we call him Vega, no big deal. And then Agile uh, is around here somewhere. I don't know. He's sneaky. Uh, Tabaxi, again, if any of you will have any kind of uh, issues with that, uh, just, just give him his space. He'll give you your space. Right? Uh, if you need anything, don't hesitate to ask any of us. Again, uh, with the exception of Faith, just kind of leave her alone. She yeah. <laughs> All right, so we have uh, about two to three days. Uh, hopefully, we get good weather. If not, um, that will suck. About how fast are we moving? Uh, so, <clears throat> average like in feet. In feet? <laughs> uh, I don't know. We cover about. Well, we have the benefit of not having to deal with roads. Also, it's a boat in the air, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but I would say, I would say, on average, we're probably cruising at about thirty to forty miles per hour. When we break the clouds, we'll go through some turbulence. You'll feel a rock. When we get up there, we can push it a little more. I think Absalom would probably get airsick. Not gonna lie, <clears throat> this is like this is unknown territory. He's always had his feet on the ground, always. Yeah. Forty miles an hour. You said we're going a few days, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
that's that. How far is that? In Ten seconds. <laughs> Why? No, I'm not asking him. I'm asking you. Yeah, this I also don't know. Don't know. Lance, Lance? <laughs> Lance? What do you What do you want? You said 40 miles an hour to what? 40 miles an hour. How fast does it go in 10 seconds? 10 seconds. A minute. So it's like a. I'll figure this out. Uh, long is gonna Forty divided by six. Have rope. Find the six. longest piece of rope you can on this ship, and no, no, no. I wanted the mask of the thing and tied it to itself. And the entire time, it's just gonna be water <laughs> like that. Yeah. So, just kind of like daisy chain. It's like one fifteenth of a mile in ten seconds. I think. Okay. Boy knows feather fall. I just rather not do it. <laughs> Check this out. So you're moving at a pretty good clip. I think that's mm -hmm. right. Um, and you said if somebody falls over, there's a chance to grab them or something, but maybe not. Yes. Um, so the way that at this, it, since you're kind of asking about it, he, he grabs a melon and he's like, yeah, there's a five foot wake and he tosses it overboard and it hits this, what an invisible balloon, essentially. You see it like, and then as it reaches out just past that five foot, it like a stone drops down. Yeah, he, it's kind of a display that he does. So just so everybody knows, you fall overboard. You got five feet. I've got the rope around me. This is amazing. You jump, jump. overboard. Yeah, I also jump. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, um, I, I, would, see, I actually uh, want to tell him. I say, forgive me. At, at this point, I'm I would probably jump just to Derek jump. <laughs> that's all I can do. It. <laughs> and uh, everybody else sees um, at this. Everybody else sees Valley just jump over the side as well. I do um, want. I do okay, want, so it, just to be clear, it's 587 feet. Valley's gonna die. Give me your magic. So we're, in 10 seconds, they'll travel 587 feet. There you go. I'm in. 500 feet in 10 seconds. None of us can keep up with that. Well, so. almost 600 feet in 10 seconds, but yeah. Yeah. All right. So off you jump. Yeah, just like frogs follows. <laughs> All right, but then, then I do want to. I do want to. I do want to change. Yeah. Gonna, I just think it'd be fun. I think Eric would want to like do that. So, odd sensation as you're like mid transposition with your echo, you feel the like pseudo impact of Valley into your back, trying to grab you, as she then like just blows through you, and you're back on the deck. <laughs> And then you see her like, like flip in midair, wings sprawl out wide, looking like visibly confused, seeing you fall. But you do what now? I just have a rope. I'm still tied. Okay, so yeah, you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, roll a con save for me. I hope it's not even long enough for him to hit the wake. Like he's just hanging off the side of the ship a little bit. <laughs> Uh, 17. All right. You don't throw up. You do, however, take seven bludgeoning damage Ooh. as the rope just like cinches you in half. I mean, you're just like, like you like, kick yourself in the face. It, it pulls so hard at your midsection. Um, Who's in the she, crow's nest? She will, uh, she makes her way back up and grabs you kind of unceremoniously at this point. She just kind of like aggressively grabs you by the back of the collar and flies you back up to the deck and plummets you down on the ground and then ugly mugs the crap out of you. <laughs> Who's in the crow's nest, Adam? As you get up there, you see in like an almost jet black, although there's a faint bluish hue to his fur, but you see um, Agile Knight, the name of the- uh, Tabaxi. The Tabaxi, he's just kind of curled up there. He's got like some like hay formed into a, a bit of a, like a nest, like a little nest up there. And he's just like snoozing. What kind of wings does she have? I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit up there. Bird wings. 
No, she has, she has natural wings. They don't look like, do they look like mine? I do want to tell her. No. no. Hues of like brownish and orange. Is she part I, bird? She's Aarakocra, so she is like the humanoid bird. Like the tabaxi. Oh, like I see. Cat, she's I see. a humanoid bird. Okay. I do want to tell her. Uh, sorry. Uh, just for some of She's just looking straight ahead at this point. She's not even acknowledging. First time I've seen a uh, flying ship. I was kind of fun there. You see, like the feathers on her neck kind of bristle up a little bit. Frog tugs your leg. <laughs> yeah, she's she's wearing full plate armor, so she she doesn't really react much to it. It's the crap out of me. All right, so uh, I hold it for a very awkward long time. Basically, as soon as we're up in the air and stabilized. I'm gonna go find Karen. You're, uh, I will say the um, roll con save for me. Yeah. Uh, 12. You're, um, that, that pain that you really not had to deal with much yeah. has come back kind of in force. Um, okay. It's not quite crippling, but right. it is dull and stabbing at times okay. um, and it since you have taken off it's become worse um, let me take a shot of whiskey okay what are the general effects of those two things together um heartburn okay. yeah heartburn almost immediately you yeah so it takes a minute but the pain does numb over a bit but it, it it's there okay all right i'm gonna go find taryn okay what are you doing Alton, I'm training a wyvern. I have a flying carpet. I myself can fly with the power of the winds. I want this ship real bad. <laughs> why, why are you telling me this? I love flying, and this feels like the ultimate flex. Yeah, well, uh, let's put it this way. You've been ultimate flexing on me since the day we met. Uh, I'll get this sense that you've got a beef with me. What? I've got this idea. I don't know, maybe it's crazy, but I've got this idea that you think you could take me, even though we both know that's a crock of crap. Um, I don't have a beef with you, but I do think I can take you. No, see, that's... Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> No. See, that's, that's where you want, my friend. Um, so I think that, uh, you know, there's no time like the present since we're up in the clouds and things like that uh, to just have it out. You know what I mean? Because uh, you and I both know that uh, I might be young and old, but uh, I'm a mite thicker in the never regions than you are, you know? Uh, so I just told you about five different ways I can fly and you want to try and fight me in the sky at this point both fate I'm sorry both uh, Vega and Utak have kind of started like to peek in so this is the Goliath and the Knoll and they're both like this is going to be awesome they're like trying to make it hey, like, uh, super casual hey, come what do you think yeah. tell, tell my, uh, tell my was... friend in yeah, he don't stand a chance to pick up a flying and up and he don't stand a chance against me I mean, we both know it, right? When, when you say we no. both know it, you mean the two of you? Yeah, the two of us. I, me and Kevin. Uh, uh, I don't know. Taryn's pretty quick on his feet. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. No, wait a minute. You see what I can do? You see him? Right, you know yeah. he's, a, uh, he's a sad sack. Hey, Eric. Yes, sir. What do you think? From. We both know it's true, I think right? There's only one way to find out, boys. No, all I'm saying is we don't even need to find out because we know. Yeah, yeah maybe you need to put your money where you're right. Right? Vega at this point goes, Yeah, you suck. Go for fight. That's right, Karen. See, you're you're saying, so uh, all I'm doing is I'm saying, you shut your mouth. 
Uh, don't have no beef with me because we both know it's just a, it's pointless. I mean, why would we even? I'll just explain it to Terry. Why? Uh, what did you just say about his mom? Yeah, his mum, that's right. When I was laying with her last night, she was talking about how pitiful Terran is. Oh. And then if the two of us was to fight, then I just brought him over like a second meatballs. I'm going to shoot. I'm going to use mean? detonation. What is that? I, I'm going to use detonation on. Yeah. Okay, wait, I can't be surprised, right? Right, man. Yeah, you like look over at Rogs and wait a minute. Oh crap, it's happened. <laughs> As it happens, I'm roll really initiative with that because he can't be surprised. Roll uh, initiative. He rolls. Okay. He... I'm giving him the three. Oh. <laughs> Me? Yep. Well, I get there. a three. Oh. You get a three. Oh, for initiative. And I'm. Can I use bless on myself? My. He's my a divination wizard. Divination. <laughs> so so you're like I sense danger, and at the same time you see like this odd sparkle around frogs, and your instincts tell you danger's coming from frogs. You get a three. Punch frogs in the face. Can I use blessed on myself? Bless. <laughs> what is that? I can use blessed on myself, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh? Spell slot. <laughs> or points or whatever you want. Yeah. I mean, that's not how it works. I strategically asked, we're going to be in the sky for a couple of days. So, I mean, I thought I'd get them all rested yeah. and get there. Yeah. I just want to duke it out. All right. Alton, you got a three. I got What's a 16. Your plus? My plus? Oh, okay, I guess, it, yeah, it doesn't matter. As long as he didn't roll anywhere near That's you. Not good. All right. So, Taryn, then Alton. Make it a Taryn, good what do you do? Make it a good I'm, one. I said detonation. Detonation. You're going to blow up the ship? <laughs> no, no, what it only that? affects creatures. You have to roll. It's only, it only works on creatures. I want to put my shade or my echo behind rocks. Okay. <laughs> All right. You got to make a, a save right here, Evan. What kind of save? Uh, you need to make a constitution Does save. A con save? A con you save. Oh, real bad tonight. Let's see if we can get something better. Hey, not bad, not bad, not bad. Can I say 16? Oh, that's what you needed. Woo! Nice. So, so you take half damage. So explain to, like, explain to us what happens yeah, here. Yeah. Backflip out of the way. As soon as he like turns to face Rogs, you're like, you suck. <laughs> what I, I don't know how this works. I'm casting in a way it only hits him, but it's a 20 foot radius. I would know that. I've used it a ton of times. I don't. I don't really know where we are on this. Are we on the deck? Yeah, you're yeah. on the, just the top. Yeah. So just... I'll shoot. It, I'll shoot it off to the side so it only hits him. Okay. Um. So it's seven d six. Seven d six. Sure is. It's essentially like a fireball, right? So good be yeah. from seven to forty two damage. So it's one one. All I'm saying is, it's better hit hard, boy. Ooh, I rolled three fives. That's not great for you. It don't hurt. <laughs> You're not raging. It's true. I'm not. Yet. Right. Twenty two. Twenty two damage. damage. That's almost exactly it. <laughs> Bring it on, boy. This is the best you got. As a bonus action, I'm going to activate my shield. Okay. Oh, it sounds like. And then I'm going to fly 30 feet in the air. Do you have to activate your yeah, wings? I think you do. Yeah, I think that's uh, you know what? I might have to. It's a yeah. bonus action. You know, you I'll, take the bonus, I'll take the bonus action to do the wings instead. The wings instead of the shield? Okay. So, yeah, you, you like thrust your fist forward, and there's this explosion. <laughs> Although it's almost like, uh, it's almost like, um, like an alcohol fire, like... You can see the ripples from it, but it doesn't really have like the same fiery effect. Although you do feel it somewhat, and you hear uh, Lazar like, "Hey, man, not my shit!" Uh, <laughs> as some of the some of the wood itself kind of crackles a bit underneath the uh, just the intensity of the spell, and then out come the wings, and off you go. Oh, and I want to mention one more thing. Yes, uh, I get to pick my mastery. I'm going to pick mastery of air, so I don't take fall damage. Okay. All right, Alton, what do you do? Is he's now 30 feet in the air. Okay, uh, you're, you, wait, which way do you go? Do you go 30 feet straight up? 
Uh, yep. Straight up. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm a rage, of course. So yep. bonus action to rage. Uh, question. Can I replace an action with a bonus action? No. Uh, that's dumb. I know. Okay. It is dumb, actually. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm gonna pull out my lightning javelin. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, come on, baby. What you do? What you do? We do. Oh, 26. 26 will hit. That'll hit. <laughs> okay. Uh, what it is, boy? Okay, 26. Wait. Does science not apply? Would you not just be left behind on the ship? If you flew in the air. I mean, if I, if I jump on a plane, I don't fly to the back of it. You're probably a certain yeah, you're already, exactly. yeah, I'm already I'm already moving at the speed of the ship. Just to make a deck save. This is starting to leave but you hand. can't move that fast. But you are flying mm -hmm. now. Yep. We'll see. I don't know. Does science it, it's a it's a oh, magical okay. flying ship. Does science apply? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Seventeen. Yeah. 17. Okay, so, so, he doesn't care about so you take 2d6 lightning damage. Okay. Am I paralyzed? So you take 8 lightning damage. Okay. Then I hit you, so you take another 1, 6, 9, 11, uh, 12. Another 12 lightning damage. Plus, plus what was the initial 8? 6? Total 20. Total? No, you said 6. Or did you say 8? It was eight and then twelve. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. Okay, so it's okay. lightning damage. Cool, cool. Uh, then is there like a mass? Yes. Nearby that I can jump. Well, I probably can't get that high anyway. All right. Um. So then I'm gonna use my move to. Is there such a thing as like a defensive stance? Am I able to like crouch and hold my shield over my head as an action? You can do that. Okay, Otherwise, do that. As an action, yeah. Well, you just threw your. You, took, right. you took the attack action, attacked. right? Which you get, yeah. When you take the attack action, you can make two attacks. Oh, uh, okay. All right, yes. stick a javelin. <laughs> stick it in the throat. All right. Ooh, that was not as good. Uh. Thirteen. I assume a thirteen. No, that misses. That's a miss. Okay, whatever. All right, I'm done. Let me know if you're getting ready to roll for something. My turn. Noise. <laughs> My turn, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna go another thirty feet in the air. Okay. As you do, I'm gonna coward. <laughs> By the way, this is the first time anyone has seen my wings. I'm pretty well, sure. It's true. Yeah. 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 I don't even think I. Uh, I'm trying Did to think I Did you see him? Oh no, because when I made it to town, I had to run it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't right. see him in the town. All right. I'm gonna use combustion on you now. I'm shouting all kinds of obscenities. Is that a roll? Uh, you have to save. Con save. Oh, I meant like you have to let me know if you got a roll to hit or roll for damage. Oh, okay. Meta game. It's not meta. It's it, I have to do it. Hundred percent meta. Let me know. I have to let me know when you got to roll something. Well, yeah, he has better. to know if it's part of a spell. You can replace an attack saving or ability I check. Don't... Yeah, I have to do it before he rolls. Because this replaces the dice. No, no, I. Get I could, you got to make it save, Evan. No, the rage on combustion. Is I don't know, but like he doesn't first. know that you know how to do. What? That. The rage on combustion. I know that, but I, I yeah, hold up. The rage on combustion is touch. You have to be able to touch me. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. Combust no, I don't. One reaction. I don't. Evocation can't. I, no, no, no. Choose a creature within 120 feet of you. It's not a spell. I have psionic. It's different. Oh, it's a psionic. Okay, I thought you were using the spell. It's like okay. No. What about the what am I making? A con save. The reason why I said that is because I was going to do it regardless. That's why I was. Um, 17th maybe. I, all right. <laughs> six, I get to roll 6d10. 
So do I take half? You will take half. Okay. Do do any of your abilities have you rolled a hit? What's Hold on one thing? second. Yeah, I don't think we're inside, but I think that's fine. Yeah. 41. 41. So you take half of that. So I think you take 19. Yep. Hold on, I have a bonus action. It's a good thing I got a crap that I held. Actually, every, every side point I spend, I can regain that much health. So I'm back up to and then I've got a bonus action. Give me one second. Uh I'm gonna use wind form. So it changes my flying speed to 60. Is that your whole turn? Huh? Is that your whole turn? Nope. I'm going to shoot 30 feet out. So I'm 60 feet up and 30 feet to the right. OK. Uh, I'm immediately going to stand up and just hold my shield to the side. And I'm going to start yelling all kinds of profanities at you and calling you a coward. And flying that actually out catches the ship on fire. What does? It? it just has a creature. Let's see. It says and catches it on fire. If if he fails, he he didn't fail. He succeeded his throw. Yeah, but if I succeeded and died, I know I'm saying like, like does, it, does it me? Does it hit the ship at all? Since I would say it's magical fire. I don't know. But it doesn't matter. He, he, he could have combusted it in the air, so it just hit. I'll yeah. say at this point, um, fate has now had to put out two fires. Okay. Uh, so the cat thing goes, hey, listen right now. You keep this up. You guys better learn how to fly for real. But yeah, I'm, I'm standing up, and I'm going to like start yelling. It don't matter no way, he's a coward. He flies out of reach, I can't even touch him, he knows it. He knows it if he's close enough for me to touch him, I'll kill him. I'll beat him down right now, but he flies away like a pansy. Take off, boy, take off. <laughs> and I'm just gonna keep like swearing at you the whole time. That literally means nothing to me. I'm gonna kill you. To be clear, if you do not quit, the only obligation that I have is to take that man to that castle. I don't care about any of you. I do care about my boat. Well, you know, I wasn't the one that set it on fire. That was him. <laughs> I'll come back in and land. I invite nobody, dude. I'm just chilling, dude. All right, as he lands, I'm going to dive on him. <laughs> Uh, well, you, it's still my it's still my turn. I can land. Talents kind of dig into your shoulder. Oh, he's gonna do it! He's gonna yeah. do it! I'm not going to. And then you see her hand you your lightning javelin that had flown off into the distance, and she recovered. Thanks. And she and she like pushes you, but not violently. Pushes you. Away from Terry. Okay, back. All right, now I stab Brox. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like the whole time you're like full, like this. <laughs> and I'm telepathically going to reach out to Taryn or to uh, Alton. <laughs> and I'm just going to be like, nice try. I don't say anything. Okay. So the captain goes, All right, we need to get some things straight. Don't do that on my boat again. <laughs> First thing. Second thing, I've overheard some of you talking. 
I don't think you know where we're headed to. I can tell you from my experience that this castle is not occupied by cloud giants. I don't know what's there, but it ain't giants. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just said what I mean, man. <laughs> I don't know what's there, but it ain't giants. <laughs> is it smaller, smaller things? This is a derelict castle. Something is taken, but it ain't, it ain't giants. You have no idea what it is? Well, we didn't get close. We saw some riders, I don't know, eagles on the backs of eagles. We didn't get close. Interesting. Did he tell you about the screen? Like party style screen? Like people are having fun? Who's screaming? The closer you get to the castle, the louder you hear them. Have you ever been in the castle? In this castle? Yeah. No, man. We didn't get within half a mile to a mile, maybe. Do you know anyone that's been to this castle? Nobody goes to this castle. That's that's what I'm trying to tell you. Mm. Cloud giants are welcoming. If you can get there, they're interested. You know, you can talk to them. You can deal with them. This ain't that, man. Hmm. Anyway, I just thought you should know. You might want to save some of your energy for that. Absalom's going to slide down the crow's nest ladder. And then he's actually going to pull out the Vagabond staff and make the tent and go inside. I think it's a Vagabond. Yeah. Th that's what, what I said. Vagabond. What do we do? The yeah, Vagabond. You're saying it like it's a Cinnabon flavor. Sometimes. Vagabond. <laughs> Sometimes we're in acquisitions. Sometimes recovery, sometimes transport. We're free, man. We do what we want. You guys fight or? Sometimes. Not each other. Yeah, That's not, stupid. It, yes, it is stupid. Probably just the only occasion. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Why did Brown spread against me all of a sudden? What did I do? I know you're only obligated. I was betting the underdog, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so against Tanger, he had to have one guy. But why, why just me? Oh, why, why do we just have to take that guy? That was my deal, man. Did someone did mention Harry Potter? You guys don't talk to each other? Did he tell us? I don't think so. Oh, you did. I think Absalom did. Um, Listen, man, you guys got some problems, man. Yes. Me and my crew, we're family. We die for each other. Tell each other everything. I know that at any time I can count on anyone for my life. You guys, <laughs> you guys have to sleep with one eye open. I don't know what's wrong with you. Yeah, well, I like girls, so that's fine. You live the way you like. To be honest, I probably would have said it, but I kind of forgot that you said something about screams. Do you? Sounds like that's not a good idea, but you know, whatever. Whatever. What do you mean? So you, that's your deal with the people in there? Yeah, uh, you're from, uh, you're from Tathia, right? Yeah. So you've never been in the far south? Oh, yeah. None of the theater, man. Oh. You mean like far south? Yeah. Like I come. Is that what you mean? Like choke? I come from the Shear. Well, an island near it. Far south of you. We have a legend. Legend of a woman. 
with the incredible powers, the ability to grant wishes. She lives inside a well. If you can make your way to her, survive the perils of the wilds, as she thinks you are worthy, she may offer you a deal. My deal was for freedom. This vessel was gifted to me. There was something else, which is for me to know. And um, I had to give two things. I am never allowed to return. I mistakenly thought that that meant to the well. As it turns out, I can never go home. But, you know, it is what it is. Sure. And the second was that at some point in the future, a man with no face would come and ask me a favor, and I must oblige. Would Bronx know any other names she would go by? Like if she came to another area? Uh, make a history check, and because it's Bronx, we can roll with the binge. Um, she's never been associated with the well. She's always the lady of the tree, the woman in the forest, something like so that. So we we know of the five fingers. Do you get that one that the sister? Possibly. Would I know any of the sisters? No. Would that? No. Question. Okay. Totally. <laughs> It's more of a religion based thing at that point. Um, what, you know, what I know? I uh, have no. in religion, but. So, are there any stories of somebody defying the lady breaking the agreement? Sure. Warnings. Has anybody survived it? Anybody broken it and uh, made it out? I don't think it works like that, man. Why? Have you seen her? I don't know. Listen, I just wanted you guys to know. I don't think you're ready for, for what we're headed to. So... You you got like a day and a half to get there. So would surprise you. You're taking on demons. How bad could this be? And then I'm gonna be like, have you ever seen this? And then I'm gonna do the <laughs> <laughs> Can I throw a boat for <laughs> All right, so at least now I feel like it's not his fault. You're the crazy one. I'm saying, oh, that's what I'm saying. For sure. For so sure. What, I'm confused still. You I say I'm sorry. You say we're not ready for what's coming. No. But you haven't seen what's inside yourself. You just didn't scream. <laughs> to say that I heard the scream, it's not. You don't hear the screaming. You feel it, man. Like a uh what are they called? Uh Simon. You know what I'm talking about? Similar. I'm gonna yes. I'm gonna talk to him telepathically and be like, does it feel like this? Yes does, and no. Does this bring back memories to Absalom at all, Adam? Um related to a certain time in his life. So yes, a little bit. And in fact, you okay. you've noticed that just before that you set up the the vagabonds. Tent, um, which I, the vagabond staff, you're you noticed that you were kind of breaking out in a cold sweat. Your palms were a little sweaty. You had some sweat kind of beating up on your forehead. Easily. And in fact, you Alton have the similar experience. You remember screams when you were a kid. Yeah. Um, yeah. You both you both recall a similar experience. Yeah. So like Absalom kind of just like kind of does a like gulp a little bit, kind of like you know like. Kind of just sit there and he kind of breathes a little heavy and then opens up the tent and goes inside. Now, I've experienced terror, like you describe it, but I've also experienced people with uh, faking, uh, illusions, things that, uh, I don't know, 
how, how do you know that what you're hearing isn't more than a, a trick, something to ward off unwanted visitors? Well, I think, you know, that is what it is, but uh, faith, she says that it's not just, it's not just an illusion. She can see through most of those, you know, very accomplished, very capable. She says that, uh, It's dark stuff, man. Okay. Anyway, rest up or do whatever. I don't care. Just don't burn down my boat. Actually, actually, I don't walk inside the tent because it takes 10 minutes to make. So I'm there for the entire conversation. <clears throat> All right. So with this, the first day goes by. You guys continue to um, climb. You're continuing to make... Good progress. Can I do something before we go to sleep? Yeah. I'm going to go in the crow's nest. Okay. And I'm just going to sit and meditate. And this, like, I'm guessing we're above the clouds so we can see the night sky, right? Yes. As you do I'm this, going... I can stop and you can see, you. the first thing you see are the, the big eyes of night, uh, agile night. Is, he's just like looking at you awkwardly as you climb up the tent. He's kind of sitting not quite Indian style. He's got his knees kind of like propped up on him and he's kind of sitting back. Doesn't make a sound or anything, but as soon as you kind of crest the top of the crow's nest, he's just like looking at you. Oh, sorry. I didn't know anyone was up here. Okay. Anyone on the deck? No, uh, down, down below. You see, like, uh, if I go sit like at the front of the ship, like and hang my feet off the front. At this point, Utak is is uh, doing rounds. So he's right, I'm just gonna go sit ship. at the front of the ship and hang my feet off. Good. And I'm gonna close my eyes. I'm gonna see if I can find the beacon again. You're gonna try to do what now? Find the beacon again. Okay. Um, make a first off, make an animal handling check for me earlier. I forgot that you did that. Oh, oh that reminds me. Adam, did I get anything from the wyvern poison extract? <laughs> um, yes. We talked about it a little bit, but not thoroughly. Yeah, we'll say that um, you were able to get, at this point so far, you have two doses of wyvern venom. Okay. Okay. I'll write that down. <clears throat> Uh, uh, it is a 17. Okay. All right. That's success with that. So you're, oh, you're oh, you oh, named, oh, my wife. named the wife right I haven't. I'm going to name him right now. All right. Duncan. Duncan. Okay. <laughs> Duncan the Wyvern. <laughs> And it's it's like its face is like you know how like kids have that like the uh, like the Disney proportion where like their heads yeah. kind of big and like you know like all those it it's kind of in that state where like it is as cute as it will ever be. It's got big eyes. Um, it does have sharp teeth and you know fangs and all that stuff. But the way that it's proportioned, it's almost like a like a Studio Chibli version of a wyvern. I'm gonna try and like I guess throw him and let the wind come up under him. And see if he can like kind of get yeah, so the yeah, graph of like, like it's uh I don't know if you've seen this before, like I've seen the I've seen people birds like, when they're trying to teach them how to fly. Yeah. Loft. Yeah, so it's kind of it's kind of going through that um lofting a bit. And in fact, go ahead and make a second animal handling check. And this one you can do with advantage because of that. Okay. Also 20, dude. Oh, Excellent. Dude. All right, so count that as two successes. That's sick. okay. I don't have a pencil, but I'll remember that. I'll just do it right here. And so this goes on for a little bit, and then um, Duncan kind of nestles in, um, curls up, and, and goes to sleep. And you take a moment to try to focus your mind. And in a way, you're both closer and farther um, from your target. 
So go ahead and make a wisdom ability check. Just add your, your wisdom modifier to it. Hold on one second. I'm adding in this wyvern thing. Yeah. The, do I see him in front of the boat? Yeah. And he's meditating. Mm. Um, I'm going to try to check thoughts on him. Okay. Also, I'm just sitting on the decks in a place where hopefully Karen doesn't see me, and I have my arms crossed and I'm just yelling at him. Just ugly mugging. It's like, it's night, you know? At this point, you guys have like crested up above the clouds. You still have like the wisp. Clouds kind of flowing past the boat. The the moon is bright overhead. It's it's odd because you if you didn't know better, you would almost think that you were just on a boat in the ocean, but the ocean itself, instead of being deep and dark and reflective, is soft and white and reflective and but like in a more glowing and less like less a iridescent. Yeah, you just kind of have this little luminescence underneath you. Um, it almost looks like like a foggy, like if you guys were just in a, on a boat in the sea on a foggy day. The stars, though, are unobstructed, and it is just dazzling to find yourself in this perspective. All right, my wisdom save is a 15. Uh, ability check, just... Just a D20 oh. plus your ability. Uh, sorry. Yeah, that's what I did. 15. 15? Okay. Yeah. And so you, what, explain to me, what exactly are you doing? What are you trying to do? In what way? You, you had said that, you said that one time when I was focused in my psionic state that I saw a beacon in the north. I'm just trying to see if I can see it again. I just gotta be 30 feet away from him to be able to hit that clock. I don't have to be right there. Right. And so, um, what was your, do you, did they have to roll a save against it? Okay. And I think you may also need a wisdom saving throw here, Karen. Okay. 19. No, 20, sorry. No, 19. So if he has to save, he definitely saves. Yeah, yeah it's a uh... wisdom save. Yeah, if I want to play deeper. Okay, so you just gain surface thoughts? Yeah. Okay, so you you tear and begin to focus on the image in your mind that you held in place for, for that brief time of what it was to sense that beacon of energy, that psionic energy that uh, had called out to you in that way. And so, Rog, do you kind of get that? And he knows that I am reading his mind since he went to jail. And if are you wait? Are you going to try to probe deeper? This is only yeah, if you, you do try to probe deeper. Okay. Um, and it says the creature can use its action on its turn to make an intelligence check tested by your intelligence check. If it if it succeeds, the spell ends, and then he can verbally direct me or talk to me or whatever. Sure. So initially, you gain this surface thought that he's focusing in on this image that was somewhere to the north but below the surface of the ground um and then you catch an image of the woman that wait hold on hold on don't i succeeded my check right yes but yeah, this I is still get you still get your thoughts. surface thoughts oh, okay this is surface i yeah. just don't get right because this is specifically what it is that you're focusing on i see i see and so you get you get this image of this woman who is titanic in size. She is as tall as a tree. She is both muscular and incredibly feminine. She has some sort of like black dress slash armor affixed to her. She has raven hair, pale skin, ruby red lips, and Taryn. It's at that point that your focus is broken because you know that Vrogs is delving into your mind. What are you doing? Um, come on. Uh, Did I see the beacon? Are you wanting to make a uh, intelligence check contested with mine? If so, that'll end my spell. You can force so you can force him to to end the spell if you have opposed intelligence checks. I guess. I mean, is that why I rolled a save? 
No, no, that was something else. Yeah, because he could have probed deeper into your mind. That's what he was trying to do, and that's what you could see. And I can I'm, tell that. Can I, can I tell he was trying to go deeper than what he yeah. saw? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to end it. Okay, so make an intelligence check, right? Or intelligence save. Natural 24, 27. Hey. Okay. So, yeah, you have this almost like static white noise sound that pierces through your mind for a moment. I run away. <laughs> what are you what doing? Is <laughs> yeah, and so what Brock. Kind of like you got caught by the teacher. Yeah. <laughs> Brock's oh, high tail is below deck so at this I'm point. I'm telepathic. I'm sure he's not 120 feet away from me. There is not 120 feet to this boat. Yeah. So, yeah. I can choose not to communicate back, though. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've like curled up behind some barrels in the yeah. storage deck and you're like no 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 yeah, all right karen what do you do so did i see the beacon or was i distracted and i didn't you remembered the beacon you do not see anything new. i am going to use commune okay uh i'm gonna spend all my points for three questions all right. It's uh, it's been a while since we've we've been able to to talk. Uh, I know this is a silly waste of a question, but are you happy with the tree still? As you're kind of focusing in on this, the the warm breeze just the wind just kind of flowing past you which you realize now is somehow mitigated through you know yeah. magical forces but you can still feel it is you're you're finding yourself like very pleasant like i i've never done this but almost like you're in one of those like sensory deprivation chambers where it's like everything is just perfectly acclimated you kind of feel that you can feel the ripple of the wind across your skin but it doesn't feel cold or chilled in any way you feel incredibly comfortable and you notice as your vision drifts back to the stars that they flare with a brightness and you take that to mean yes. My mother. Do I have time to get to her or is it urgent? <laughs> It's got to be yes or no, right? So, uh, yes or no, or undetermined. Yeah. Based uh, on your question. Do I need to get to her as quick as possible? The night sky remains as it was. Um, you take this to mean uncertainty. Is she in imminent danger? And with this, you see the stars almost appear to dim a bit before regaining their normal light. You take this as a negative response. Like a no or like no. negative to my question? Oh, OK. Okay. Thank you. That's about my question. So I'm just going to sit there and meditate for a little while longer. Okay. And uh, yeah. Anybody else? Anything else? Uh, frogs just looks around for like some sort of pastry or some food. <laughs> and then uh, like goes back up to Taryn at some point. And okay. Just puts it in front of him. At, some point, yeah, at, some, <laughs> at some point in the night. Yeah. Uh, make a stealth check for me. Okay. <laughs> Just because we're going to have a long rest, I'm just going to make it my net 20. Natural 20. Okay. So, yeah, at some point, Tyrion, you get up to leave and you notice that there is a fresh ish pastry placed just to your side. Do I know it's frogs? You could put two and two together pretty easily. I could. 
Yeah, you've been around me long enough. Yeah. Probably something. <laughs> I'm going to reach out to him telepathically. Okay. Did you see her? Does anyone else sleep in the Vagabond tent? Eric. Right? Um, Yo, what's up? You're in the Vagabond tent? Yeah. Okay. Just curious because that's Carmack? where I'm sl that's where I'm sleeping. So yeah. Carmack? You, know, you know how it is. Is it big enough in there for yeah. yes. it's a yeah, it's it's Liaman's tiny what? hut. Yeah. Yeah. I'd hang out in there. Yeah. I'd probably it's magical. It's much bigger than the ship, actually. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's bigger on the inside. Yeah, it is actually. Eric sleeps with no pants on. You find that out the hard way. <laughs> and that's the reason I have nightmares. So. <laughs> Sort of, uh, kind I, of I challenge him to pants off, dance off. I don't, dance off, dance off. I don't tell him I saw her, but I reach out and say, uh, "Is it a secret?" Um, more of a mystery. You're uh, the only other person who's seen her. Well. I'm just curious by nature. I've seen you meditating a few times, so just trying to figure yeah. out what's going on up there. But Not usually like that. What was that? It's not usually like that. Oh. Usually about communing with Melora and having my time with her, but I've been plagued with dreams. Well, the woman you saw, who I'm assuming you saw, is my mother. I just found out she was my mother. And I, I would like to find her. Have I seen anything like that before? Or? No. no? Okay. You've seen giants before, but this was, like, was yeah, very distinct. And, you, and it's difficult to pinpoint it exactly, except for the fact that she looked normal okay. but huge, huge. Okay. whereas giants have their own distinct features you've never seen anything like her okay well i just want to let you know i'm i'm here I, if it's secretive just tell me i won't tell anyone else but you need to talk I'm, could, I'm here to help i'll make a deal with you rog Okay. Don't reach into my mind anymore. I won't reach into yours. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to pull out my flying carpet, roll it out on the deck, leave a little bit of it rolled up on the end, use it as a pillow, and fall asleep. Before, before that happens, I had been scowling at him the whole time that he was doing all this. Mm -hmm. For like literal hours, literal hours. Like literal hours. You're, you're sitting under the stairs that, that rise up onto the, I guess, the poop deck. Yeah. Know what call it, poop deck <laughs> where like they steer from. And you're like sitting up under the stairs. And just... I was lying on that, so I'm not, I rolled a twelve. Um, he he believed you. I guess uh, he made no attempts to discern otherwise. What is it that you were lying about? Oh, yeah. that you would not peer into his yeah. mind anymore. Yeah. <laughs> no. So I watched, but I didn't interrupt or try to listen to your conversation with frogs. I just it waited. was telepathic, so okay. you couldn't have. So oh, you weren't even close to it. No. Okay. You're no. Okay, then I'm gonna come up at some point, maybe during that conversation, maybe not. Yeah, you see him like unfurling the carpet. Yeah, yeah. I point. imagine I would wait until I see you move. So I'm gonna come up to you as you're doing that. What was all that? What? You sat there for how long? And you just. Did nothing. What was that? Uh, just a moment of prayer. I'm confused. Uh, you... I sat and prayed. What? What do you mean you're confused? I don't do that whole praying thing. We should be. Do you believe in the gods? Yeah, I think you're better than me. Why? <laughs> I literally don't think I'm better than you. You're the one who wants to always fight. No, you're the one that always wants to fight with me. I picked a fight because you always give me these side-long eyes, like you want to make out with me or you want to punch me, one of the two. And I don't know which. 
I figured it was punching me, so I just went for the punch. I have I been doing I haven't even been doing that. <laughs> uh dude. I think you have a lot of issues with people who you might see as a threat. And I don't see myself as a threat to you. So at this, like completely obviously, I'm like, I don't think you're a threat. I don't think you're a threat. What would I think that? Fulton, you are a very strong boy, especially for your age. Just because I'm a little bit stronger doesn't mean you won't get there one day. Good night. you when you say that. You see, like, smoke coming out of his ears. Listen, have just go get a good night's rest like you fell asleep when we were fighting the Beholder. Have a Snickers. You don't have to say it. <laughs> this episode brought to you by Snickers. <laughs> Jokers. Probably gonna get sued for saying Snickers. So yeah, I get super mad at Stop Bob. <laughs> so like, I, I mean, obviously you guys have seen super immature things before, but this is the most like full on <laughs> baby rage. <laughs> oh no! Because <laughs> you're you said you're like nineteen, right? Yeah, I'm so like, like two years older than you. <laughs> yeah. Although it's I'm kind trying. of like ambiguous, like both yeah. of you have kind of kept your age somewhat ambiguous. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I stop off a bit now. Eric and Karma, you guys awake abruptly to the sound of jostling and muted screams. And at first you guys are like full blown in a panic. Like Eric, you immediately summon an echo, both Carmack and Eric you know draw swords out before you guys like look around and you can see absalom tossing and turning and almost swinging somewhere in his sleep i um i go i go over to absalom and I swing my sword around to make sure that there's like no invisible creature. Lance, attacking. can you be any louder? I can barely hear you. Uh, yeah, let me, can you hear me better now? Yeah, a little bit better. So I, I go over to Absalom and I start swinging my sword around over him in case there's like an, an invisible- like an invisible attacker? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you're like, and you look over at Eric like, I don't know, there's nothing <laughs> there. I want to take a moment. Pick Absalom up. Yeah. Okay. Um, Absalom, roll for an attack. Okay. As you feel now, you feel like that physical impact. You immediately realize that you've been disturbed. 22. What is it? 22. 22. I assume that you do not sleep in armor. No, absolutely. Right. So uh, roll full damage and... Just the uh, D4? Just the D4? Uh, was he rolling? No. He stabbed you with a dagger. Dang. Out of sheer instinct. You, D, you have, D4, no sneak? You have, See, that's what I'm trying to decide. I, I do... I think it is sneaky, but at the same time, I don't know that you are in control of your actions, and you have specifically said that your sneak attacks are based on precision so i will say no on a sneak attack okay that makes sense yeah. i rolled a one on damage so but my plus is what's scary about my character actually so so as you go to as you go to pick him up you immediately see this flash of this flint of steel as he drives forward and you are able to bring your forearm up just enough to deflect it away from you as it digs kind of past your shoulder Muscle a little bit. Eight damage. <clears throat> and Absalom, you come to as you back up into the wall of the uh, the tent itself and kind of like draw, drawing up. And at first, you feel like you are drawing up like some sort of feral cat ready to pounce. But to Carmack and Eric, you realize that he's cowered against the wall of the tent like 
a wounded child. He comes to kind of in the middle of it. Hey, hey, it's just us. I, Eric, I, I'm sorry. I, 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 I don't know where I, I don't, are you okay? Yeah, are you okay? Yeah, I... You're flailing about in your sleep. I, uh... I may need to, uh... sleep alone. Um... I don't know if it's safe for me to be around you guys. Where I'm at right now. Um... I... I... I, I actually just I just leave and I'm I'm gonna go talk to Lazuli and see if he can let me sleep in the Briggs while it's we in, are. It's in the middle of the night. His quarters are locked. I unlock it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, as you enter in, you see that he is not alone. That uh, there is someone uh, sharing his bed. Sex They're both asleep at this point. It's like three in the morning. Mm. Just so Make a stealth check for me. Okay. Fails. You rolled a one, remember? It's like, that's a lot. Why didn't he just unlock the door to the Briggs and go to sleep? Yeah, that's what I was, that's what I was gonna do after I saw these with somebody. Uh, 18, <laughs> 18 on my stealth. With, with your disadvantage? Oh, disadvantage. With your madness? I thought it was just I didn't sleep. No. Was it? It's just that you don't get the effects of a long rest. You don't yeah. get. It's not like exhaustion. Oh, mm. uh, okay. Well, so check that. Uh, no, I check that. Then yeah. Oh. As long as long as you go back to sleep, then you'll yeah you can recover. Uh, my bad. My bad. Okay, so I'm eighteen's fine. Eighteen's fine. Yeah, okay. 18's so sleep. then I'm gonna just gonna shut the door and go back. And I'm just going to find the Briggs myself and lock myself in. Okay. All right. So the rest of the night goes off without a hitch. That was my bad. I thought you got disadvantage on that. So, you, yes, yeah, so you really don't have any negative effects because you didn't take any damage. or. Damage. Yeah, but role play wise, it's pretty cool still. Yeah. So. It's a rough night. Um, at this, everybody comes to in the morning as you guys, um, and this is kind of odd. There's no sound, but. Um, Agile Knight rapidly comes around with the exception of the tent, comes around and tries to shake everyone awake. And as you come to, he puts a finger to his mouth indicating that you should be quiet. And then he points up to the top deck and then he goes to the next. I was hiding somewhere. Yeah, he found you. Okay. <laughs> Does he come to the Briggs too? Yeah. But with this, he just kind of like taps on the bar. I just reach through and unlock it <laughs> and just keep going. <laughs> I'm just, I imagine it's just kind of weird. The tent, which is weird because on the exterior it looks like canvas, but it's a hard knock, almost like a door. And then you see kind of that same gesture. He waves on as you guys slowly. Yeah, again, this is like early morning. You can see the sun just beginning to rise. But you, as you all come awake, you feel uh, you feel thunder, which is a little bit bizarre because the clouds around you are nice and white, a little bit scattered. It's sunny, it's clear, and you've noticed that once you breach the top of the the cloud surface, you had like some moisture and some extra humidity, but like it seemed like you've kind of risen above the storms. But you can feel thunder, and it kind of rocks the boat a little bit, and you can see that the, all of the crew have lined up towards the front right side of the boat. I uh, make my way over. Okay. So one by one, you guys. trying to like read the room, like, okay. Right. And you can see like everyone is staring straight out at something in particular. And you feel again the thunder. <laughs> so I'm not going to be able to see where anybody probably like, the crow's nest. Okay. So you make your way up to the crow's nest. And then when you get up there, that's where Agile Knight has returned to as well. And you feel the boat kind of 
rock a bit. And um, Lazuli is, you can tell, quite nervous. You can see like a certain tension in everybody a little bit as you begin to peer out in the same direction that everybody else is. You see nothing. You see just the clouds and the same still ocean of clouds, the fluffy white clouds. Is it no guy? Yes, everybody is. I want to whisper in his ear. And as soon as you begin to, he goes. And he Make a perception out. check. Yeah. You don't have to, though, because okay. almost immediately you begin to see a ripple through the clouds. And when I say this, the, the size comparison here would be like if somebody with Lance's wingspan was next to our model of the boat, that's the size comparison. You see the clouds ripple in this gigantic wave and then cresting through the surface of the clouds, you see a bird that is almost too big to be believed. It could easily fit three or four of your tiny little ship in its beak as it soars through the clouds, crests up, and then dives back below again. Is this, is it within 30 feet of me? Parts of it are. Uh, are. Are we you, supposed to be able to see the model? I want to, I want to detect this. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it's out there, but no, you can't. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> it's all here. But I'm not going to see. Oh, good. I don't, you don't have to change it. We're fine. Yeah, we're fine. There's that one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've seen that. Okay. Yeah. So just as, just as a little bit of a size comparison, it would be as if Lance was this bird. Yeah, wow. Okay. Stretching his arms out wide. <laughs> you have a banana for how scale? I still not feeling it. Don't have okay. a banana. Well, I'll imagine not. Yeah. Uh -huh. it's, it's like several football fields like across in wingspan. Yeah. I wanted to detect the last time I said that I did. Okay. Just in case Do I know what this is? Uh, you can make a nature check. Does, it, does, this, does this match the bird? In my dreams? No. Okay. The bird in your dreams was it's, symbolic. It's symbolic. Yeah, symbolic. Yeah. It, it's the Libertas is the bird. Nope. Gutter, gutter trash. Um, the surface thoughts are blank. Most. It is not thinking or considering or pondering. It is merely interpreting its senses. So it is noticed you. But it doesn't seem to think you're any kind of a threat. <laughs> okay. Wonder why. Or a snack. Or a snack at this point. It's not big enough for a snack. Absalom is totally a snack. What? Did anybody did anybody roll above a 15? Sure did not. For nature. Oh. Okay, anybody want to do a nature check? A nature check? Actually. Ah, I, yeah. I rolled I rolled a 12 on. Eleven. So no. In what we will call your studies, Alton, you remember hearing about these legendary creatures, incredibly rare. They're referred to as rocks, R-O-C, rock. Okay. Gargantuan birds. But as a few minutes pass, it slowly outpaces you and drifts further to the east. And you can see at this point, Lazuli kind of takes a breath. There's nothing we could have done if the one of us dead. And then everybody kind of scatters and goes back about about their business. The rest of the day goes on. Is there anything else anybody wants to do? Okay. Can I do some more stuff? Nope. Can I do some more stuff with Duncan? What is that? Can I do some stuff with Duncan? Sure. Uh, no, no more animal handling checks. But yeah, you're you're welcome to. Okay. Yeah. 
just going to play with them. Right. So as you're, yeah, you guys continue to make your way to the Northeast. Uh, another day goes off without a uh, hitch. Um, uh, could I make one of those checks we talked about? Yeah. Because at some point, as like, days. yeah, as, uh, as nights begin to kind of fall. Is it a con save? It's a con check? A... The, are you talking about the one that you messaged me about? No. I'm talking about growing facial hair. Understood. Understood. <laughs> yeah, just uh, add your constitution modifier. Uh, 16. Like, this is bizarre. This is bizarre even for D&D. Like, I don't think anybody's ever tempted to grow a beard. <laughs> but you do notice that you've got a little bit of stubble. Coming yes. Out, as you know. For context, before yeah. you arrived. Uh, Grogs. Grog tried to grow a beard, didn't he? Oh, no, that beard of feathers. Beard of feathers. <laughs> no, Grog from Critical Role. Oh, he oh, had a belt. That's right. That's right. And so he's going to try to uh, attempt to grow his first beard. Uh, so, yeah, you, you notice a little bit of hair forming on the chin. It's a little scraggly, but uh, it's there. Didn't say. I wish I knew like minor illusion or something. <laughs> he goes to sleep, cast it. He wakes up and it's like. <laughs> <laughs> So another day goes off without a hitch. And you wake up on the, the third morning here, your second morning at sea, I guess. As you guys have kind of drifted up even further north, you're towards the northeast corner of Amon. You see in the distance darkness. Even here above the clouds, you can see what is a dark spot. And you hear Lazuli kind of shout from the helm. Here she comes. You guys are several miles off, but as you, get, as you begin to get closer, you guys can almost feel more than hear the soft sound of moans and screams. Very faint. Um, it's not so much something that you like I said, not something that you really hear, just more of something that you are aware of. Okay, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna Jack Sparrow this. I cut one of the ropes and go flying towards the Cronus. Okay. Just, I'm just kidding. I don't know. I'd just probably like fall. Long rope and like the sail. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> Absalom doesn't know anything about sailing. Ah, oh, oh, come on. I just start going down. <laughs> All right, that was that was our floating system. That's great. Now we're dead. All right, so I obviously can't do what Taryn and Brogs can do, but I want to do my best to reach out with my mind and see if I can detect anything about these screams. Uh, mm. Can I assist? Uh, you guys are several miles out. As you guys begin to get closer, though, you can attempt to do this. Um, you guys get to the point where you're about a mile out, and now you can see in this dark and stormy clouds, you can see the faint semblances of some sort of a structure um, deep in the heart of this storm. Um, nice, dude. Okay. Yeah, what I'm gonna try on my own before I ask for help. What what do I feel? Um roll a d20 to add your intelligence modifier. Hey, 24. 24. Um so yeah, this is not something that you are specifically skilled at. Um, you, you've seen them kind of do it before, but that's not the same. This is a, this isn't like you watch somebody, you know, put together a puzzle and then you can go and try to put together the puzzle. It's like you watch somebody think about putting together a puzzle and then you try to put together the puzzle. So it doesn't help you so much to have seen them do it, but you take a moment, you kind of clear your thoughts and you try to reach out to this source. The only thing that comes to you is like nostalgia. You remember this, but not in a good, not like a good nostalgia. 
like this takes you back to a terrible time and your stomach begins to cramp. Yeah. And yeah, I'm for sure not mentioning this to you. <laughs> Okay, so as you guys continue to drift towards this structure, you can see that it is actually, you can see these, these stone, almost cylindrical structures kind of rise out. It looks like there's a larger central one and a few additional ones that are close to it. You're not exactly sure how all this works. It doesn't really make sense with what you've seen. Also, it's floating in the clouds. <laughs> so it's bizarre to see. The thunder roars and rips and peels around you. And you can see some flashes of lightning. And then it clears as you pass through. Not the screaming, not the moaning. That almost intensifies a bit. But you, you get to the point where it almost seems a little bit muffled. And you gain like this like auditory desensitization to it. Like you, you almost stop hearing it, but you feel it within yourself. And it's at that point that you see rising from the general area of this structure, several winged figures flying your direction. And Lazuli says, get ready. They saw us. They saw us. Need everybody to roll initiative. I man the cannons. They do have ballista, uh, these large, essentially large crossbows, of which no one is proficient, but you can certainly try. To They've got, they're proficient, right? Well, you guys are not proficient. They, of course, are. These are their weapons. Rob is going to try to get behind one of those. Yeah. I load frogs into one of them. Yeah. Fire the cannon. <laughs> Danny, I rolled, I rolled what you don't want to roll. Me? On an issue. Natural 20. Oh, man. That's not bad for Eric, though. Just saying. I'm your, de your dex is your squat stat, isn't it? Yeah, it's my garbage stat. I rolled what I didn't want to roll just because it's bad. I'm totally okay with this idea, guys. <laughs> All right, let me see. And I have a flying head and cast fireball at him. Yeah, dude. Anime this guy. That seems like something an anime character would do, but you have to monologue the entire way up there. Yeah. And then miss your shot because you were monologuing. You caught me monologuing. Good thing it's a fireball. I don't have to really hit. I just got to aim and shoot. Yep. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Really, you barely got to aim. You just have to see something. Yep. I had, to, I had the rock card out in case anybody decided to get frisky. I thought about it. Oh, uh, dude, why fly this stupid ship when we got a rock? You know, which is like a flying continent. Yeah, flying fortress, dude. My one of my favorite bits of art, and I used the line because I knew Mike would know what it was. Is in one of the three point five books when they had a picture of a rock. I think it was carrying like a dolphin or a whale or something, and it sounds. And the uh, first thing was almost too big to be believed. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Where's my other card? There you are. Okay. Let's see here. For our initiative, let me, I got to roll four. Okay. Um, 25 to 20. Eric, that's you, right? You have natural 20. Are you still yeah, but I got a 19. Bar. <laughs> Bar. Yeah, one. <laughs> yep. Amazing. 
That, that, that's like Eric's worst thing to roll a 20 on, for sure. That's so funny. Okay, let's see where we get to here. This is zero. Okay, so Eric with a 19. Uh, 19 to 15. 18. 18. Anybody beat an 18? Okay. Uh, Alton. Uh, let's see. Fifteen to ten. Sorry, I'm counting. You know. Ten. Uh, I got a. I got a twelve. Anybody be a twelve? Anybody be a twelve? Okay. Well said, ten. Absalom got ten. Yeah, he I always tie with someone. It's so weird. So Absalom. Rogs. Oh, I forgot for the crew. Okay. Um, let's see. Logs 10, 10 to 5. Sorry, 10 to 5. Seven. Seven. What is that? Seven. Seven. What are these things ready? You cannot tell. So do we just need silhouettes? Yes, basically. About a quarter of a mile off at this point. You can make, if you would like to, you can make a perception check. See if you can see what they are. Yeah, I'll do that. Why not? Anybody, um, anybody else? Fifteen. All right, Eric, you're up. Yo, I assume that you guys will hold until they are within some sort of range. Fifteen, you can. You, you cannot tell just yet, like in advance. Okay. Um, basically, this would be like before they come within combat range. Um, uh, as, if, are we waiting rounds? Technically, till they get close enough, are there rounds being had? About three rounds that pass. I'm going to uh, as soon as they get within my range, like on, if it's within my turn, I'm going to bonus action and activate my shield. OK. okay. Yo, I want to. Uh... First of all, summon my echo. Okay. Well, he's already summoned actually, but yeah, I was in the Um but I wanna I wanna send him out into the distance. Flying at him, dude. That's right. That's I'm gonna right. try to cut one of them down. Can you see out of those, Danny? No. I can also <laughs> <laughs> not, not at all. Well, I kind of can. It's like wearing sunglasses inside. It doesn't work very well. It's like kind of weird. I can see the, the light makes it like impossible to see, though. Like if I turn them off, I can see pretty good. Well, what happened? We lost somebody. Lance. Oh, we lost Lance. Huh? Lance is gone? Yeah, we lost him. Yeah, he's here. Did he? Well, I mean, he told me before that, like, he had, you know, to dip at some point. Yeah, but I think I feel like he'd say something. True. He, he probably just DC'd. Unless he did. Hey, do you guys remember that one time we were two hours late because Evan had to play Minecraft? Yo, I hate you. It wasn't because he was playing Minecraft. It was because he didn't mute his microphone. <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's so interesting that that happened. That was weird. Minecraft is the enemy of D and D. I don't so. know. I don't know how we didn't hear it beforehand or like see it. I don't know. It's kind of weird. I almost don't know if it was what was the problem the first time around, though. I don't know. No, it probably wasn't. Uh, it was. <laughs> okay. Well, the thing is, I quit playing Minecraft for a really long time when we tried to figure out the mic thing. But I, it wasn't. It wasn't Minecraft. It was the. It was the headset thing. I think it was the, the unmuted mic because I was still talking, even though I wasn't playing Minecraft. Mm. At least we know that's connected. Yeah, mute mics. Yeah. <laughs> no crap. All right, boys. All right. Um, let me see. That's not enough. I need one more. Oh, crap. Josh just looks like he's like, he's got sickness. Because you're like, really, you're, like you're a, and you're really green. 
You look like the Wicked Witch of the West from uh, Wizard of Oz. <laughs> uh, it would have been better if I could have found my freaking ears and a pointy nose. It would have looked a lot better, but I couldn't find them anywhere. Your nose works. I really should have grabbed my um, Renaissance costume. That would have been pretty good. Okay. And bought a bag of potatoes and cut holes in the eyes. I'm like Oz. That's <laughs> All right. So eventually they come within range. So if you wanted to prepare something in advance, you may do so now. So, um, I'm going to turn this around. Yes, I'm going to do something. I tried to First, I'm. <laughs> oh, Lance is back. Oh, Lance, this is not you looking down. Hey, let, let me know when you can see this. Yeah, uh, I can you, see that. You went too far. You went too far. Too far? Better? Yeah. My computer we can't crashed. See, we moment. can't see the boat. We can only see the. So I'm guessing they're wyverns. Yeah. Some different things. Let's point it down a little bit. Less yeah, like more mass. Aim, yeah, angle it like down. Aim it down. Yeah. Now I just see Evan. All right. There we go. That's perfect. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> right there. That's great. It's going to fall over. It's a beaut. Doesn't it seem like What a beaut. I cast a dragon's bane right away. I am gonna do something. Hey, can you see this so good? Yeah. Whoa. Yep. Yeah. Um. How far away are they? All right, it's gonna make you nauseous a little bit. I'm going to blast by a dragon. Yep. Okay, is this good? I'm gonna tape it down. Uh, yeah, it looks sure. good. That's fine. Good enough. It's not like I can leave the boat, so. Okay, I was gonna try to tape it down, apparently. It was all, this all purpose duct tape. It's not sticking to the table. I'm going to try to stick it to my computer. Dude, this night has stuck for just like things working. It has been the least cooperative night ever. You know, you have a lot of time to decide what you want to do. Please just freaking work, man. Throw me a freaking bone. Are they within 90 feet? That's what I want to know. Throw me a freaking bone here. All I asked for were sharks with freaking laser beams attached to their heads. Absol, do you want to shoot me from a ballista? No. Guys, what it means if no, I give up on being <laughs> Uh, actually, I, I know that I'd love, love to shoot you from okay. Melissa right Let's now. Do it. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, okay. Here, uh, plan B. This one right here. Screw it. I'm gonna do this. This is Mike's cam now. Dude, like... Mike, you're yeah, really voice. you're you're really lit because it's bright. Yeah. The camera's looking at it. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I was like, he's very bright. <laughs> Yo. What's up, dude? All right. Um, now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this thing. I'm going to switch this. How's that? It's great. A little bit better? It's perfect. Perfect. Well, okay. Lord have mercy. All right. I have no idea what that does to the recording, but you know what? Whatever. Sometimes it is what it is. All right. Do the. It do what it do. 
Okay, so they dive underneath the surface of the clouds. When they come back up, the, or actually I take that back. As they dive below, they are close enough that you can see the following. You can see that the black dragon miniature is actually a black dragon. Oh, sweet. The bronze dragon, however, is a wyvern. The other smaller ones here, um, the three red ones and this angel thing look to be giant eagles. And then the, the last guy, the red demon y kind of guy, is just what looks to be a human that is flying. Um, with wings or just? Um, with wings, yes, with wings. Which is an interesting point. The, the wings are red and leathery, but his skin is otherwise pale and pasty, kind of. Um, they, don't, they don't match. Um, but all of the creatures, have writers of some sort. So, Eric, as you are beginning to prepare, you see them kind of dive below the surface of the clouds a little bit, but you send your echo forward. Yeah, I want to be like looking through your vibes. Do you drift below the surface of the clouds? As they have all kind of ducked. Yeah, wherever they, they go. Okay. So yeah, you go below and you can see that they all are approaching your your vessel. Okay, I give them a play like that. Okay, so you're matching everybody else up, so everybody knows that they are surrounding you. What's around us? Should we try and talk this out? Uh, seem friendly. Can I see the riders? Specifically the one on the dragon. Mm-hmm. What am I seeing? Okay, so the, the dragon rider you see is a human male. He has dark rings under his eyes. Um, his eyes are bloodshot. He has several almost grotesque articles about him. Um, you gain that they are magical implements of some kind, but you are not exactly sure what they're for, although you could tell that they are not mainstream looking at all. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, you see, like they've got like he has like tongues and ears and eyeballs and things like that, like strewn about his arraignment. Oh God, Alton, do you recognize any of these people? I'm gonna put this to the test if I can get close enough. Uh, I'm not close enough to see him. This is only this one. Right? This one stays back. Yes. Oh. As they, they've gone underneath the cloud coverage. That's yeah, that's yeah. the issue. They are getting closer and closer. To... Are they within 90 feet? Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm going to Hunter's Mark the closest one. You oh. can see them? You, you cannot see them. I cannot. You, you need to see them to do Hunter's Mark. So but I, so Wait, we, I we, can't, we can't see them? I want to attack yeah. So you guys are like riding above the surface of a cover of clouds. They dove under the cloud. They all dove underneath it. Does, but they surround you guys. So I will say for dude, the purpose of this, you've all readied some sort of an action. Yes. Yeah. I'm calling it out. Also, does the dude run the ship? What's his name? I, I don't ready an Lazlo. action. Lazlo. Does he like do anything with the ship when I say that or no? Um, at this point, or can he do it? at this point, he, yeah, so he just shouts out. All right, well, I'll of course, everyone ready. And you can see. Um, I'm about to attack this human being. Yeah, you can see that all of the all of the members, Utak has this like nasty looking harpoon, this gigantic looking harpoon. And you can see that now he's like stood up like straight, which always before he was like really hunched over. Now he stands up straight. He's about seven and a half feet tall. And you can tell like he's just, he's got his arm cocked back and he's just waiting for the first thing. Um, a couple other of the, like the, uh, the Goliath, Agile Knight, and um, the Aarakocra have all manned ballistas on the side. And um, Fate, the, the female sorceress, is standing next to Lazuli. They are all ready. 
Do you guys want to ready actions as well? Uh, uh, Frogs is climbing in the I don't know if I'll stuff. ready one. I think I'm actually just going to use one. You could, yeah. Just because I'm the only one that can see it. I also use an action, but it's not the action you think. I'm going to poison my blade. OK. okay. Um, I'm going to climb into Ballista and leave the arrow. And bro, or Alton's going to land it. And as soon as I see the Black Dragon, he's going to shoot me at the rider. You said Alton? Yeah. OK, we'll put you up here. Uh, there are only four ballista, and they're all manned by the other crew. You're, well, I w- you can still do whatever you want to do. I wanted to do that. I, I said that before. You said they had the, they all manned them. Yeah, and that's that's totally fine. Unless you do you, do. unless you want it to be that way, then I'll try to figure out something else. But yeah, the, I'm, we'll I'm say that you you go up to the um the Goliath, and he just or yeah, he just steps aside. Well, can the Goliath just shoot me out of it? Sure. I'm sure he'd be fine. Yeah, he's proficient. In, Are you okay? He's probably he's, better shot. He's yeah. not proficient in shooting goblins, but... Um, yeah, I just move the arrow and I climb up there. I tell him what I hey, want to do. Adam? Yes? When I was I was trying to say this earlier uh, while you're fixing the camera, but I'm going to bless everyone. Okay. So everyone gets to add a D4 to their roll for attacks and saves. For how long? For a minute. The deck itself is not very crowded. Uh, Adam, it's that is not that is not including the people on deck. Just so you know, that's only including our team. I didn't catch that. That's that's only including our team. I'm not I'm not casting it on everyone else. Yeah. My goal with the rider when I get shot at him, while Eric's um, Eric's shader echo is like distracting him, I want to attempt to knock him off the dragon and land on it. Okay. Just using myself as a blunt object. Okay. Who am I using here? The Eric Cooper. Who am I missing here? The, of their crew. Oh, no, no. Sorry, I'm trying to keep track of this. Agile Knight is the ninja. Vega the Goliath. I'm just to notify you, I am adding not, I'm Blade's Fiend Poison is what's going on in the Blade. So I was mistaken. There is one Ballista that is not manned. You guys can have that one. Yeah. Um, oh, sweet. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Eric, this will be really you on the boat. Let's see. Vrogs here. Alton here. Okay. I think that's everybody. I don't know. That's the best I got. Um, okay. Eric, what would you like to do? Um, so I want to pull my sword, set it ablaze, and attack this dude. Which guy? The black dragon dude. Black dragon. So you. He's the one drift, I was like specifically. Yeah, yeah. So you drift out of the clouds and into the face of this black dragon, which immediately is like, like pulls back. Were you attacking the rider? Yeah, yeah. that's why I was. He's the one that's got the like eyeballs and the. Which you know, under closer expect. Inspection, mm, yeah, never mind. You, you didn't closer inspect, so you don't know. Um, all right, so psych, <laughs> you psych, so you, you're gonna attack the um, the writer, specifically. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, crap. Yes, sir. All right, go ahead and make your attack. Stand by one, <laughs> Evan laughs at that every time. Did I hear a niner in there? Actually, Adam is the uh, king of the sandbox. Sorry, Paul. Uh, you. Oh, real good. Um, 22, 25. 22 and 25 both hit. Dang. Okay. 
Yay. Uh, uh, 32. 32 damage. 32 damage. Uh, half of it's uh, fine. 32 damage. Fantastic. All right. Uh, with that, all you guys, you see like this blue flame kind of erupt from beneath the cloud coverage. They're both also going to get to attack. Um, 100%. Like prior to, everybody else is just like holding, waiting. You see like it's like kind of erupting beneath the surface. Um, let's see. Spell attack. Oh, I rolled a two. So yeah, you see this like spectral skeletal hand as it says something. It reaches out towards you, but your shade just kind of like blends with the clouds for a moment and it misses. Uh, however, the oh, black dragon is going to uh, just like in a fury snap and snarl and swing. Um, let's see what it does here. Three books. No. Why are there books and numbers in D&D? &D? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, what? I mean, that's All right. Uh, that's a 19 on the dice. So that's a lot for the bite. Uh, 26. Hey, so <laughs> off it goes. Then <clears throat> they burst forth into the light of day. Eric, top of the round. Now they are all visible and in front of you. Was that a ready action we did before? No, now you get your ready action. Okay. This is kind of happened like you're waiting to see some sort of target yeah. icing. So now it's like, go, you know, like, oh, they show. So like, like everything happens now at the same time. Top of the room. Eric. So oh, they come up around the class. Yes. Okay. So this no. is, yeah, we're going to go through the initiative line, assuming that everyone, both you and them, had ready to action for when you see a target. Okay. Yeah. At that time is now. What okay. do you got? Uh, I'm going to bonus action. Um, this will be actually since we're saying that this is ready to action, so you can only take okay. one action, and then we go back to the top of the round for full turns. Sure. Uh, you're always gonna throw one of my javelins. Okay. Is that twenty? Hey. Nice, nice. Oh, uh, what's it do now? Is it a ten or an eight or something? D six. Six? Yeah, javelin's a d6, bud. Sorry. It's garbage. Dude. It's stupid. They're versatile, though, right? It's garbage cannons, dude. Like if you're just pretty good. Um, sorry. Javelin's versatile when you're not going. Yeah. Fourteen, my dude. Fourteen damage to again who? Same guy. Yeah. Excellent. Trying to stick this dude. Hopefully I can knock him off. Yeah, so as it comes through, you can see a hand raised, poised for attack. And he tries to dodge, and you can see that it like slams into his shoulder. And he has to kind of drop and pull it free. Um, oh, all right. Alton, you were up. Uh, I'm going to shoot the ballista. All right. With the uh, with, with the on with the goblin. And who are you firing for? The I'm trying to knock the lighter off of the black dragon. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> what the? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, tackle. Yes. And add your dex, but not your proficiency. Yeah. I'll just get that inspiration real good. And do you find inspiration? Nope. I really uh, need you, you did. It only gives you advantage. You only get the double roll. Yeah. It's only with the elven accuracy can you get more than wow. one reroll. You can do your divination stuff. I had to do it before the roll, though. Yep. Before the roll or before yeah. the outcome? Before the, I thought it was before the outcome. Oh, before the roll? Okay. Oh, before the roll is weird. I don't know, whatever that's, that's hard to catch. That's hard there to catch. A, well, a, lot of a lot of people roll before you even get a chance to think about it. Is it tab you can replace me like my javelin would? 
is it the same attack bonus as my javelin would be? No, it will be just your dex modifier. It's you yes. must choose to do so before the roll, and you can replace a roll in this way on your first turn. Okay, it's about to get ugly, boys. Here we go. I rolled a nat one. He gave me advantage. I rolled a two. Which okay. Gives me five. Better, better than a one. Better than one. If you had rolled a one, you would essentially the force would have been so intense you basically just like pancake him. Like his legs, <laughs> your legs would just it's buckle. Fine, you kind of just scorpion yeah. right there. Only you would take damage. Uh, As it is, you're, you're trying to. You're like, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'm tracking the guy, all right, all right, and then right. boom, pull the, you feel the mechanism. You kind of like stiffen up and far beyond the target. Off you go into. Um, it's not the first time you've done healing in the empty space, I think. Uh, yeah. Can since that was his action, can I do something as I pass? On your turn, right now, you are flying. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry, sorry. Well, what was your ready to action? I mean, well, when we get to your turn, right now, you just got launched from a giant crossbow. Yeah. Well, what if his ready action was when he when he flew by? Yeah. So. I'm sure that it might be. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, as it stands, you're flying. All right. It is now the apprentice's turn. Um, that did not go great. I thought, I thought it was fine. I thought it was fine. It was fine. It was fine. It was fine. Yeah, all right. Nope. right. All four of these apprentices come within range and immediately unleash burning hands across the ship. This is a burning hands. This is a cone, fifteen foot cone. Are we doing ready at actions differently or something? Uh, we're doing ready. This is all happening simultaneously. Basically. Okay. Okay. I would. I would just. Okay. Everybody, all of you and all of them, all had the ready to action. Mine was kind of complicated because me and Alton kind of yeah did ours. <laughs> I shot him. Yeah. Okay. So, on the bright side, these guys are going to be right up. I'm sorry, I'm going to try and talk louder because I'm going right up on the thing. So, these guys come straight up here. Um, so, burning hands, as they come up, all riding in the back of their giant eagles, they place their hands, thumbs together, and fire like napalm just throws forward. I need everyone to roll dexterity save. I assume everyone. I'll tell you specifically. All right, so <laughs> you you are the only one. Um, let's see, Alton. I need a deck save. No, I'm sorry, Taryn. Alton as well. Um, that's yes, Alton, Carmack, Eric. I need two deck saves. Um, Eric, yeah, Eric, Carmack. You guys both need to make two deck saves. And uh, Alton and Taryn each need to make one. So I got a 14 on the first one. I got an 18 on the second one. All right, you guys, here's the thing. Do I got a 14. Separate damage dice, or do you want me to just roll once? It's up to you. All right. Yikes. Uh, all right, so. See, Adam says yikes. Sorry, man. All right. Uh, 13 fire damage per blast. So if you succeed, and the save was 12. DC 12. DC 12 deck save. If you succeed, you take half damage. All right. So, how much was it? Eric, you had to make two saves. A save on both. On both. So yeah, you, 14 and 18. Okay. So you take a total of. 13 fire damage. Um, Carmack. Is he there? Did we lose Lance? I'm here. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I saved on both. Uh, saved on 12, both. You took 13 12, fire damage then. Uh, Taryn? Yep. In my turn? 
Uh, no, you did you what did you make on your deck save? Oh, 14. 14. You save, you take uh, six fire damage. Yeah. And all I saved on Okay. So you, yeah, so you take uh, six. Six. Six okay. fire damage. Okay. So that was them. Uh, They're still in place, essentially. It is now the Evoker's turn. Um, so the guy in the back that is flying, um, you hear a crack, like a peal of thunder in the distance, and you see lightning erupt from this guy flying towards your ship. 150 foot range will land for a, a target of your choice, which will be the knoll. Uh, let's see. Dex. Oh, crap, my boy. Is there an Oh, that's gonna, that's a, that's a fake here. That's a fake. Okay. Um, Is there an Nolan? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm just gonna double. All right, so I need deck saves from Eric. Again? Yep. Eric, Carmack, and Alton. Oh, great. Uh, Eighteen. Eighteen, that's a success. You take ten lightning damage as this bolt of lightning erupts from the evoker, striking uh, Turok in the chest. Turok, that's not his name. Where is the only Utak is striking Utak in the chest and then arcing to the rest of you. I got 16. 16. Uh, you just succeed. I also got 16. 16. Okay, so you guys both take 10 lightning damage from this. Uh, that is the evoker. Taryn, you're up. All right, I'm gonna cast. Uh, make sure I'm saying the right thing here. Uh, lightning leap in a line. I would like, I can go in a line and I can hit as many creatures as I can. It's five foot wide and 60 feet long. Can I hit the blue guy, the dragon, and the white guy in front of the dragon? I'm the blue guy. It's a, I'm the white guy. Yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, this is Vrogs, and he's just kind of like in a big arc <laughs> at this uh, point. So you could hit the the dragon and its rider, and then the evoker in the back. That's reasonable. What about this red guy that's also between the me and the dragon? Um, no, that's not a straight line. You would have to pick dragon and the evoker, or you could hit the apprentice and the dragon. Uh, all right, I'll do apprentice and dragon. Princess and Dragon. Okay. This is so they have to make a, I think it's a deck save. Yep, it's a deck saving throw. Okay. All right. Apprentice, deck save. Natural 20. Saves. And then the, you said the dragon? The dragon and the rider. Uh, the dragon got a 13. That fails. Okay. Uh, the, and the rider is at the at, kind of beholden to the dragon at that point. Okay. He also fails. So 66. Do you want me to roll for each person? Uh, you just roll once. Okay. Okay. That is 10, 13, 15, 17, 20 damage. 20 damage, nice. Uh, and the one takes half, and then I'm going to teleport onto, is that the wyvern of the dragon, the black thing? The black thing is a, is a black dragon, but as your lightning cascades forward, you see its rider, um, you, your bolt enters its chest and blows out its back and it falls lifeless off the back oh. of the creature. I'm still gonna teleport onto the dragon. Onto the dragon. Do it. Awesome. You might catch a new one. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then hold on. Can I 
instant, can I use my movement to grab the reins? Um, actually, interesting point of fact, the dragon is the only one that does not have reins. It has like one of those saddle horns. Yeah. That's it. Dragon do what dragon want. Okay. I am going, oh, shit. Yep. I'm, uh, all right, I'm, I'm where I'm at. All right. That was Taryn Absalom. You're up, Broads, you're next. Is there anybody close I can melee on the show? This is all ready to action. Okay. You can't do movement or bonus actions. Uh, I'm not retconning anything, my bad, but you can only do one action and then we go back to the top of the turn. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. Can you teleport? Or was that a bonus action? No, that was part of the attack. Part I the can attack. teleport anywhere along the line okay. of lightning. All right. Uh, Absalom. Okay. Um, well, my action was applying my poison, right? That was even before this. Uh, okay. So is there anybody close enough for me to attack? Um, yes. The All of these apprentices are just off. Like, you can reach them. They're within five feet of the edge okay. of the are they adjacent right to a friend? Uh, yes, this one actually is. Okay. Which is right next to you. I, I guess I'll attack it then. Okay. The rider, or it's technically on the back of a giant eagle, so you can pick who you want to attack. Uh, let's name the eagle. Yeah. The eagle? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I rolled booty, though. Uh, 10. Oh, I'm sorry. I said giant eagle. I, I, I've been saying giant eagle this whole time. They're actually griffins. My bad. They're they're griffins. Okay, I rolled a ten. Regardless, try sucks. Actually, I'm I'm going to pick the weaker one. Let me double check on that before I before I commit. Since they've not been attacked yet. I think it might be giant eagle actually. Um, yep, giant eagle. So, giant eagles, final answer. <clears throat> you, yeah, so your 10 is uh, a fail strike. So, it because it is still flying technically, you're just out of reach. You kind of swing it just like a bad moment as it kind of drifts back a little bit. Uh, okay. do you have a second attack? Uh, no, I just have one weapon in my hand. All right, it, uh, so yeah, so that was the attack. Uh, Brog, zero. Uh, what do I see around? Yeah, so again, this is all happening kind of at the moment. I don't know what your ready to action was, but yeah, you fly about 10 or so feet above the head of this uh, necromancer and his black dragon. You kind of see the evoker off to your right, and you're like starting to arc downward a little bit. Is there any amount of force that comes out when I cast fire? No, it's just pure energy that leaves you. Oh no! You had you. I trust this you was, all. Did. This was a hundred percent, You you, oh, you banked on this a hundred percent. Yeah, I still have the rope attached to me from the. Cause I never said it took. Uh, yeah, it's been like three days though, um, and you were like running <laughs> down below deck and stuff. So, yeah, unless you would have come back up on deck, known that this fight was coming, and then retied well, it, I would have. It feels every within time character. I came back on deck, I. He would have done it because you okay. Know. I feel like that's within character. You didn't yeah. specifically say it. I no. will allow it. So 50 yeah. foot of hemp and rope. You are still flying. I mean, you're yeah, you're still well within 50 feet, I think. Yeah. Nope, I take that back. You feel an incredible tug at you. You will take nine bludgeoning damage yeah. as your leg. <laughs> And yeah, you swing down and uh, make a deck save, actually. Okay. Real Are quick. you about to get keel hauled? You're about to slam into the this black dragon. Real good. Uh, 22. 22. You slam onto the black dragon, but immediately begin to drag off because you're still tied onto a rope. What was your ready to action? I was going to cast, um, I was cast a spell on it. I didn't determine what spell, but I was going to cast it. Okay. Um, depending on can I, I guess I'm just going to cast the text off on the dragon. Okay. And I'm going to try to peer deeper. So this is like as soon as the, um, I think it's an action to peer deeper, right? 
Yeah. Okay. So uh, your initial detect thoughts is your first action. You have to take a second action to, to push deeper. Uh, Check in on that. Right now, I'll give you the detect thoughts. It notices that its rider has just been blown off its back. And you essentially get the idea that it still thinks that it can win this. Okay. When you cast a spell as your action on each turn, you can focus your mind on a creature that you can see its turn two. So that's an action, right? To cast as an action. Mind as an action, you can either shift your okay. So for concentration, yeah. So my next yeah, your second action. But yeah, you get this. You get this idea that it doesn't care that that guy just got vaporized, and it still thinks that it can kill all of you. Can I talk to it? You, you can say something yeah free action you can speak as you're like this is again all happening very fast you're you sense this thought like oh it's still gonna attack us as you're sliding off of its wing what do you say i say if you help us we will set you free we will no longer be a slave to any of these people and in a, in a moment it turns towards you he goes i am a slave to no one uh, himself. Necromancer. <laughs> Necromancer's up. The other necromancer that is on the wyvern out there is going to cast a spell. And the one that was on the black dragon, you said he fell lifeless? Yeah. Okay. He's, yeah. Yeah, yeah you, okay. Vaporized. you guys vaporized. Okay, I thought, uh, Adam, you just sounded like a uh, corpse husband. I don't know if you know who that is, but that was who? really creepy. A <laughs> uh, corpse husband. He's like a music guy. But he's also like a YouTuber. He sounds really creepy. It's Thank just like you. his natural voice. Creepy. Um, okay. I'm dead if I'm here, please stay. <laughs> yep, unless Bird Lady really came and got me, but she's right back. <laughs> I'm just a dad. <laughs> that was the opposite way that I thought it was. Mm -hmm. I thought I was just going to be. <laughs> oh gosh. This would have been okay because I would have gone that room for That's true. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you see this large spectral hand appear and it tries to push off. the no this it appears just in front of it and forces into it um but he and he in fact is pushed five feet but he's able to grasp the edge and so the no although he had um a spear or a, a a harpoon ready he's blindsided by this uh this giant hand and pushes him off the edge he drops the harpoon but he's able to grab the very edge of the boat as he flips over the side. Okay, uh, let's see. Carmack, you are up. All right. Um, so basically, we're still doing like kind of the ready to action phase. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Just, so just a few okay. um, So the nearest uh, red red flying guy um mm -hmm. i'm casting toll the dead so um like this cacophonous ringing rings out um and asked to make a save to the writer yes to the writer the writers themselves are they humanoid i'm just curious yes they are all humanoid i rolled a one Okay. Um, so, um, has he lost any hit points yet, or is he? No, he is not. Okay. He will take eight necrotic uh, damage. So. so, yeah. So, what is your um, you you just raise your sword, correct? And the emblems that. The uh, the symbols erupt on the blade. Is that correct? Yeah. So the way I like kind of like flavor it is like I the my act weapon 
um, which has been something which has kind of like this now a kind of more of a shadowy glow to it. Um, there's like runes that light up, and this one's like in the shape of a bell that um, as I cast this um, okay. and channel um, it through the, my packed weapon. And so you feel the vibration from within the weapon. You see this person reach up and grab their head. Um, you see like a, a spurt of blood erupt from one of their ears, and then they fall off the eagle, <laughs> which then okay. flies away. Are okay. Um, are they dead? Yeah, I mean, all intents and purposes, they ain't coming back. Okay, so when this happens, I curse the soul of them and they temporarily are bound to my service. What? Um, so its spirit rises from the corpse as a specter, according to the monster manual stats. Um, it has, uh, so, let me hang on. So um, speaking, they had one hit point left, but because I rolled a one, I made them fall off. So they're not technically dead yet. Okay, um, so they're still falling. All right. It is a matter of time before they're dead. So maybe I should have spoken more accurately. All right, well, that doesn't happen yet. Uh, because uh, I you will want them to come back, which they can eventually do, but it'll take a little bit of time. Got it. All right. We'll pass on that for a moment. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah, because they, they, yeah, like I said, they had, they had one left. Um, all right. Crew goes. So there's this barrage of ballista and bolts and fire and things like that. I'm just going to roll for the sake of just rolling here. Uh, first guy. Boom, they drop this guy. So the knoll actually slips back onto the deck of the ship, grabs his harpoon, and stabs this dude through the chest. His bird flies away. Um, over here, Elacocra. Miss the... Um, let's see, though. Um, Captain Lazuli with a crossbow takes out this guy. Fate is holding action. She's not doing anything. That's a miss. And then the Goliath uh, takes a shot at the other rider on the Wyvern and misses. All right, Eric, back to you. Full turns now, full turns. Full turns, uh, okay. Any blue? Shadow cross. Okay, I'm going to do uh, an echo, and um, I'm going to try to uh, also get on this black dragon. Okay. <laughs> Party on the black dragon. I mean, is this, are we weighing it down at all? Nah. Yeah, yeah. right. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. No, it's, yeah, it's like, pretty it's big. Got like a 27 it's, strength or something stupid. It is. It's real big. Yeah. It's somewhere in the middle. The it's not like a young one or anything. Oh, it's a dollar bigger. It's a thick boy. Yeah, it's got plenty of strength and plenty of space. I'm just gonna put this uh, on. I've got a red hoop here for your echo. Okay, so echo on the back of the dragon. Yes. Check this out. All to your next one. Yep. No, I'm on it. Yes. Uh, can I attempt to grapple slash control this thing somehow? You could, but your ally is currently doing just that. Um, Taryn is right. in the saddle holding on. To, you could seem like frantically looking around <laughs> like, there's no freaking reins here. And he's like holding on to the, the saddle horn. Maybe I should. Slowly sliding away. Yeah, he just like, <laughs> oh, you're <laughs> on it? Yeah. Barely. As the thing is like in mid flap, he's getting ready to hit like the pinnacle of the wing flap, the which will flag. most likely <laughs> throw a bronze. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the rope, I'll get the whole 
<laughs> so okay. <Brad's> like, <laughs> okay. Uh, I am going to. I, well, I got to get rocks. I got to get rocks. I'm going to throw. Uh, is 50 foot of rope good enough? Yeah. Yeah. His real issue here is he's still tied to the ship. Yeah. Oh, but we can always cut that off. Like you tied me to you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try that. Okay. So do you have a full action left or uh yeah I have, I have full, full action. Yeah, so yeah, so you you kind of just like tie the rope to you and then throw the rest mm -hmm. towards bronze. Yeah, I don't know if I tie it to me, but I hold on to it. That's fine. For his weight, that's fine. It's oh, it's yeah, essentially anchor. Yeah. yeah, it's it's <laughs> anchor. It's fine. Yeah, so you just, uh, so can Brog do I need to make a check? Um, I will say at this point your throw is fine. It's kind of on him to see if he's able to. Yo, to you got what it takes. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, I do have some other things. Okay. Um, can we resolve that real quick or now? Sure. Make a deck save for me. This is difficult because imagine you're on the tip of the wing of a dragon. You're tied to a boat. You are panicking a little bit, and this little rope comes flipping towards your face. There's a 22 good there. 22 does. And you abandon the wing of the dragon, grab the rope. You immediately feel the pull from the other rope as you kind of slide down some. You have plenty of space to kind of navigate between the two at this point. So when we get back to your turn, okay. So yeah, you can see that he is, he's going to be okay. Okay. Um, I mean, worst case scenario, he can let go and he's still tied to the ship. Sure. Although you are, do, by the uh, way, everybody that's off the ship now, you're fully subjected to the wind here, which is immense. Sure. Uh, it is very difficult. I would like to uh, ask Taryn if he thinks he can manage it. Taryn, do you think you can manage that? It's a dragon line. Uh, I, I do not think I can, but, but I will try. <laughs> no pressure. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> All right. Alton, you're up. Yeah, uh, so I'm going to run to this edge of the ship closest to that eagle. Uh, yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah, that one's better. Uh, oh. This one's actually within melee range. That's why I don't remember what you can do. Make. Are you raging? Make a I think you, yes. you have to rage. Okay. Yes. okay. Wait, wait, wait. Rage is a bonus action, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. I won't rage then. Okay. No rage. Can you do that yes. ability? As or a bonus it... action, uh, you can telekinetically launch out. It doesn't say anything about needing but... to rage. Okay. Yep. Maybe it should. We'll find out later. Uh, Makes okay. sense. Strength save. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, yeah, sweet. Six. Uh, so let's see. Uh, uh, it takes. Don't forget, you guys get to add a d4 to your rolls. It takes. Oh, d4 to the attack or the damage? Your attack. Yeah. And. Uh, I got it. Attack and I did save. Not know that. Okay, cool. Uh, so it takes uh, fourteen. Okay. Damage, force damage, and he has moved fifteen feet directly toward me. Okay. So as you reach out, you you have this odd sensation where like he's he's far from you. Yeah. Right. This is not anything that you've ever done before. At the same time, you can feel in your mind that you can grab him, and so as you reach out. You feel this force pull from your body, reaches out, lashes around him, grabs him around the midsection, pulls, he immediately folds in half backwards. You hear a bone crunching sound as he snaps in half backwards and you throw him clear over the other side of the ship. Opposite, and the eagle drifts off. <laughs> Crunches back. Yeah, just yeah. folded him in half. So that was a bonus action. That was a bonus action. Um, <laughs> yes. 
turn the nose to a hot dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You so folded this guy away. I am going to pull a javelin then, and I'm going to throw it at the, the mount specifically, at this other one right here. Okay, which uh, and I can't yes, rate, so that's because right? I use my bonus. Correct. Okay. That that eagle is un unmounted. Oh, that's I don't know if you. Yeah. yeah. So the um all of the eagles, I've kind of threw them away in case somebody wanted to try to to reach one. Well, they've all been taken care of. I'm not gonna do that. There's a rider there, a rider here, and an independent flyer. Oh, and I take it back. There's a rider and a wyvern, a black dragon, and a, a flyer. Okay, I'm gonna look around. Evan. Your javelin of lightning, how long does it take to recharge? Is it a day or a week? It's recharged, but I'm not going to throw it right here. The lightning javelin? Because if I miss, I lose my lightning javelin. Yeah. And um, even if you hit, right. you might yeah, lose your, Unless you can get to them and pull it out. Before so, they fall. Uh, I'm going to look around. Are any of my friends injured that are within range? Um, Actually, um, yeah. I mean, yes. You guys all, not everybody, but some of you took some minor fire damage. Who looks like they're hurting? I took 20 mm. points. Yeah. Okay, so then I'm going to run to Carmack, and I'm going to lay my left hand on you, uh, and you feel uh, the effects of Cure Wounds. Cure Wounds right. is, is You what? feel violated. <laughs> <laughs> no, what is it? Uh, Danny, help me out. This is 2D4. Plus your modifier? Your wounds, 1d8. 1d8, my bad. I don't know anything about D&D, guys. 1d8 plus my... <laughs> modifier, and I don't think you have a modifier on this. I think it's just your D8, man. Right? Because it's the, it's the tattoos. Yeah. So I just just the D8. Thanks. Uh, you yes. gain 1 HP. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> a little bit better and somewhat violent. That I'm could sure literally like save my life. You know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, know, I, guess like constitution. I know right but yeah that's all that's all i'm doing did you have to roll con to like difficulty yeah i did don't matter mm -hmm. keep moving yeah i don't know i'm also not a spell yeah, so yeah i wonder if maybe it shouldn't be the original artist's Spell casting my fire plus good. four. That would be cool. Document it. You have to keep track of this. Plus, plus four? four. Heck yes, you gain five HP. Yeah, like yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of cool. I like that. Because you went the extra mile and went to the yeah, yeah. To the pro. Woo! Yeah. So You're document welcome. that because You're I'll, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was that was Alton. It's now the, the apprentice is dead. Uh the evoker's turn. Hmm, looking at this, that turns south pretty quick. Are any of the vokers adjacent to me? I can't see them. Hmm, okay. Um, no, the evoker is here. You, anybody that is familiar, Eric, you kind of noticed this. Um, everybody else. Anybody that recognizes the evoker taking action, you realize immediately the spell being cast, which is fireball. However, and this is going to be a level five fireball, it is dispelled or counterspelled in midair by fate. Oh, as this beam of light jettisons towards the ship. See, counterspell. Which one? Which one's the evoker? I couldn't see. It's the, it's the orange dragon. This one. Oh, okay. All right. Oh. oh. Um. All right. So then it goes to Terran. What are you doing on the back of this dragon? I attempt to communicate with it through telepathy. Sure. What do you say? Uh. Why are you attacking us? We mean you no harm. I mean you harm. All right, classic dragon. I am going to oh. I feel like use you... radiant beam on it. What is that? Use radiant beam, and it needs to make a dex, dex save. 
Okay, so you like point what, blank. Just describe the spell to me. What does it mean? To uh, as an action, you project a beam of light at a creature you can see within sixty feet of you. The target must make a dexterity saving throw. On a on a failed save, it takes sixty six and is blinded. What's okay. the save on it? Dex sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. Your issue here is that he's going to have advantage since you are, I mean, you're touching it, and this is a ranged spell. What if I make it? It's not. A, it's it's not a ranged attack spell. It's like a it's like an area spell. That's even more stupid. Yeah, because then I feel like you guys are all. Yeah, then every one of us to... probably even you. It says at one creature within sixty feet. Man, it's got to be a range spell, right? It's interesting. I've never, I've never seen something. Well, I don't, yeah, I've never seen something. Like that. Usually, that usually there'd be a ranged attack. It's within sixty feet, right? But just one creature, not everything in the line or whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and call it that. It's it has advantage on the saving throw because it's point blank. Um, Hold on, then I'm gonna change it. Okay. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. That's interesting. I'm just trying to uh, okay. Dex is good or not. That's the problem. <laughs> it doesn't have a huh? Well, I guess I wouldn't know. I'll just I'll just use it. Radiant beam. Dex Why not? What do you got here? It's probably the worst. I'm just still gonna do it. Still gonna do it? Okay. Do something if you're good, someone. I'm gonna huh? do it. Thirteen. Thirteen plus a dex modifier. Which is Brings you fifteen. Does not get it. At it's a sixteen. All right. It's blinded. Solid. <laughs> I was so on the fence like that. I was like, you just need the plus three. <laughs> plus two. Yeah, plus two. Good. Twenty-three. Wait, this is a saving throw. My bad. Plus five. Its modifier was two. Oh, no. It has a plus five on its deck saving throw. No. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Okay, I, I guys, okay, just, just to point this out. Uh, can you, can you say that again? I missed it. It saves. My mistake. He saves. It had a plus five. It had a plus two on its modifier. Because like the modifier is real big, and then the saving throw is like a lot smaller. I still think that's a better chance. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can roll with advantage. But doesn't yeah. it have? Didn't yeah, Raj do something to negate? Yeah, it was a good point. It was a good point. My bad. I'm sorry to steal. I know that's like a gut punch. But. Yeah, you did. <laughs> All right. So they take, but, take the damage. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. You keep working that up. Absalom. No, what do you I, do? I, I'm doing more stuff. Okay. What, but did Brog not do something to make it minus? It did. It did. It still, it just minus also minus succeeded. Minus. Oh, I see. Is he um, gonna, okay. So I just made his roll a 13. So that way he didn't roll with advantage. Anybody want any candy? Halloween candy? Is there some candy and some chocolate? Yeah, I'm just not here. No, no. Did you go to the page? Yeah, no, I just bought a Stop. You boys chipping right now. He needs those chips. Adam knows. Adam knows all about them. So he's got no candy, no chips. Yo, can you want to catch me one of those spells? Hard seltzer? Yeah. It's, well, if, if it is, then yes. Give me two. <laughs> if it's hard, I absolutely <laughs> want it. If it's regular, I kind of still I want it. I guess I can drink it. I'll still drink it. I'm not grabbing it. Mike is the MVP. Hold on. Frogs, what did your thing do? What'd you say? Frogs, what did your thing do to it? My thing? Frogs' thing? Yeah, didn't you do something to the dragon? Yeah, all I did was I made his role a potion with my potion ability that I get from the divination school. Horton. Horton. I see. It just made him a third, his role 13, so he didn't get the role. I see, I see. So I figured I had a better chance of him not getting that. I was trying to help you. That's so sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was confused. So 13 plus 5 is 18. Oh, wow. It's cake? Then like you just made this for you. Like, Nice with their chances. That freaking sucks. Uh, so those are the two skips we got. 
As my bonus action, I'm going to use fire form. Okay. I, be, I become wreathed in flame, flames, and any creature that ends its turn within five of me takes 3d6 fire damage. Nice. Unfortunately, that's also Eric yeah, at the moment. Do that? <laughs> well, I mean, it's the dragon. Oh, I, it. I thought it's... it was your echo. I thought you like went to go help Frog. Well, yeah. yeah. But, well, no, no. So what happened? I know you can't see this, so I'll explain it to you. You can change your mind if you want to change your mind. So Eric is like, you guys are full blown ghosting right now. Um, Eric is in back, but I think you guys are considering switching places. Um, so you're sitting in the saddle. You've got a hand kind of on the horn of this saddle. Eric is behind you, spooning, and he had just kind of chucked a rope off the side of the wing to Brogs. Um, but yeah, Eric is directly behind you. Okay, I'm still gonna do it, but can I use my movement to climb up the up further five feet away from Eric? Okay, like towards the head? Sure. Yeah, dude. All right, Burn um, down, boy. Make an athletics check for me. Uh, pretty good. Fifteen plus. Okay. Uh, that's sixteen. Yep, you're good. You're able to hold on. Um, all right. You, you so you do the race thing or the the wreath. Yeah. It's fire form. Fire form. I look like a human torch. Excellent. Absalom. Have these guys not moved closer like this entire time? Not the other guys. They sent so the, the, is uh, there is there anyone near the ship at all? No. Oh. So looking at the phone like you like I can see you, but I can't. Oh. You also can't see me. I uh just guess sit there. Understood. I I I I'll ready in action. I I'll get to the closest point I can get to where an enemy's at. And if they come up there, I'll swing my dagger at them. One of those moments where I wish I'd have a bow. Maybe stupid bow. Is there a bow laying around? There's a ballista right next to you. I'm not proficient at that, but I shoot it anyways. I shoot it anyways. Where's it? Where, what's the closest target? I'll shoot it. I'll shoot at it. All right. So it is oddly, it's an action to load, but a bonus action to fire. Um, I do it. Yep. So you. Whichever one, I guess. Black Whichever. Dragon, um, you've got the Wyvern and its rider, or you've got the Evoker that's flying by itself. We're all on the Black Dragon. Yeah, yeah. The, the Black Dragon is covered with your allies. I'll shoot at the Evoker because he was the one that was like in charge of the fireball, and we all saw it. So. All right. Um, Dex, it's a dexterity, right? You, Dex attack. Dex attack? Roll and add your dexterity modifier to it. Am I proficient at all? Interesting question. I'm actually going to say yes. You and Eric would both be proficient with the ballista as oh, they have soldiers. common war. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Yeah, cool. Uh, that's actually really good then. Uh, 21. 21 Josh, hits. What kind of damage am I looking at here? <laughs> it was really a 2d8. 
Two D eight damage. Can I um can I retcon and bonus action a, a hunter's mark on that target? No, um, no. Oh, we, yeah, it's an action and a bonus action to. Oh, fire. you're right. You're right. Okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. No, okay. So two fives. What's the? And is it my dex mod for damage? Yeah. Don't forget your extra d fours when you're rolling. <laughs> oh, what's even higher than I rolled like a twenty six then? <laughs> so. Wow. I'm assuming that my telekinetic thing would only work on creatures that are within one size. What's my damage modifier, Adam? Okay. If I, hypothetically, if I were to jump... Um, you're, you're, I'm sorry, what did you say? What's my damage?